<clears throat> Let's get this out. <clears throat> <laughs> oh yeah me, me, me. do we have to do like really very soothing deep voices I was actually well you stole my joke now. <laughs> so with that this is the unidentified <laughs> podcast episode I said it 23 yeah 23 also known as the Randy and Nathan show episode got oh, too much mm. we are we have too many of these yeah also That's, on top of that it's the the late night edition of the yeah, podcast it is, the, it is Randy and Nathan in the morning Hey, uh, how are you folks doing? Uh, the late, come- <laughs> late, early morning. <laughs> it's currently 6 a.m. here for me because I couldn't sleep a wink. And it's, what, 1 a.m.? Well, yes, 1 a.m. So, it's, so not, it's not too bad for you. It's kind of, it's a bit bad for me. Like, it's, <laughs> it's the next think, day already. Do you think the sound is different because it's nighttime? Do you think people will notice? Be like, yeah. oh, I can hear, <laughs> or I don't hear birds or something. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I usually cut that stuff out, but. Well, if you hear something. like if you hear like a rooster in the background or something like that, you know, then <laughs> you maybe that'll give it away. Roosters? Do you no, I, I do not. I do not. But you know, that's like a farm thing. <laughs> I never actually understood that because you see in TV shows and cartoons all the time a rooster. Oh, what do you cockadoodle do? What do you, yeah. What do you, what do you, what do you crows? What do you call them? What is the thing that they do? The crow, isn't that a rooster? Crow. Crow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, sure. Whatever. Uh, as the sun's coming up. That's I've never experienced that in my life. Yeah, and then you don't hear the flute in the background as well. The doo, <laughs> doo, doo, doo. <laughs> that never happens either. <laughs> I just did the weird Brady Bunch tiki theme by accident. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll trust you on that one. I don't know that reference though. <laughs> oh well, Brady Bunch. Yeah, George Glass. That's all I know. <laughs> Who's George Glass? That was your one's boyfriend. She made up. Who? Uh, the nerdy girl. I can't remember her name. She was like, Jan? She, yeah, she's like, oh, I have a boyfriend. She's like looking around the room. His name is George. George uh, uh, Glass. Glass. <laughs> <laughs> I um, have not seen the Brady Bunch in many, many years. Me neither. So, have you seen the Brady Bunch? I seen the movie, but that was the movie does not count. That doesn't count. Yeah, of course. So I haven't seen it then. Well, I mean, you've seen the film, the film, the film. Yeah, I've seen the film. <laughs> But you have not seen the TV show. Um, no, it's weird. I don't know. I, I just never really watched it because, I don't know, it's kind of came and went. So, there you I go. I mean, that's not something. If you're of a certain age, then it's fine. But you're past that age. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To where you need to see that. Mm. Are you going to watch Full House when it comes back? Uh, Did you watch Full House? No, I didn't. I didn't watch that either. Then you so. probably shouldn't watch Full House. <laughs> I had a Did weird conversation with world? someone. Wayne's World. No, Boy Meets World. Oh, um, no, I didn't watch that. I know what it is, but I didn't watch it. Man, my my nineties childhood is just being torn apart. In front of it. Well, <laughs> Brady Bunch is like the seventies, so right. Uh, I was just gonna say, I, I was had a weird conversation with someone the other day. They said they've never seen an episode of uh, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. It's like what? That's so that, crazy. To me, is less crazy than Elle saying she didn't even know what the Price is Right was. That is but, unbelievable. <laughs> there, I, to me, that's both equally crazy. Like. L not knowing what the Price is Right was, and this guy is saying, "What the fuck is the Fresh Prince of Bel Air?" It's like, "What? How do you not know what that is?" I, Just I completely my, flew past them. I was talking to my friends about that, and they're saying, "Like, what? What? What did? What did she watch when she was sick?" Because every if you, if you were homesick, you were basically required by law to watch daytime TV. Price is Right. I mean, it's just. You could be in the bathroom puking, and the TV will find you and turn the Price is Right on like that. It's just, it's ridiculous. And it makes you feel better. And I remember <laughs> drinking lots of ginger ale while watching The Price is Right. Mm. Price is Right. <laughs> hey, don't go to the, the touring version of it, though. <laughs> yeah, we... if, if it comes to your town, maybe don't go. Unless you, well, if you want the checklist, if you want come on down, a new car, some idiot betting $1. And 20 bucks for a picture, you spin the wheel. You know? Oh, yeah, if you want to spend $20. <laughs> yeah. of, no, you know what not, to do. You don't even know. You get to spin the wheel. You have to take the picture. They don't give you the picture. <laughs> uh, you got to cut corners somewhere. That, that was great. That was a great uh, segment you had. I think that's like two two episodes ago. Uh, I think it was. Yeah, you just ran this whole segment about fucking uh, the prices right because uh, it came. It was like the live version of it. The yeah, tour. The, live version. the tour came to his town. He went to see it, and oh boy, it did not live up to his ex- expectations whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just the the part. I I audibly laughed out loud when it's like, yeah, you can spin the wheel and spend your dream. And then the $20 thing came up on the for $20. Oh. 
<laughs> it's just everyone's quiet, and I hear you, ha! <laughs> it kind of, I mean, there was, like, I mean, they cheered because they're like, yeah, we could spin the wheel, and then it said for $20, and I'm just laughing. <laughs> that just the. <laughs> uh, that's great. Yeah. Speaking of The Simpsons. Yes. I, oh, uh, yeah. Harry Shearer is leaving. Yeah, that's some crazy news, alright. That's ridiculous. I don't know about that. Yeah, and this seems like they're still trucking on. There's no talk about not doing it because he's not going to be in it anymore. I've and heard it, mixed stories about what's happening. Yeah, me too. Like, it's a bit... It, like, they're trying to get him back, I think, but they want to talk about it, but he's kind of... I, I think he's very adamant that he either wants a lot of money or he's walking, so... Well, yeah, well, the thing is, though, is that he came out and said, oh, I want to, I want the opportun- opportunity to do other work. And yeah. then I was like, oh, that's kind of messed up that they won't him, let him do other work. No wonder he's leaving. Yeah. And then the dude came out and said, like, the man could literally phone in his, he, he could, he could do the job by phone for all we care. Yeah. I, I don't care if he does other work. That's not what it is at all. So that makes me believe that Harry Shearer just wants a bunch of freaking money. <laughs> Or is just, or just doesn't want to do it anymore, and doesn't want to be the guy that says, "Oh yeah, I'm leaving the Simpsons because I don't want to do it anymore." He's got to blame somebody else, right? Basically, what I'm saying is that here, Shearer kind of sounds like a dick. <laughs> I mean, he's like he's been in that for a good long while, so and he does he does a lot of voices. Don't forget. Yeah, he, well, the the pro it's not the amount of voices he does; it's what voices he does. It's Flanders, it's Mister Burns, it's yeah. Smithers. It, it's a problem. Mm. Because those are some of the most iconic characters in television history, and yeah. now they're not going to sound the same. Uh, yeah, that's weird. Ho- hopefully, he he sticks around. But I remember uh, I was like, I, I follow like a good few like Simpsons pages on Facebook, and they always like tweet like uh, you know funny snapshots or like clips of Simpsons. Yeah, I, I mean half your Twitter feed is you posting <laughs> retweets of Simpsons stuff. Oh yeah, keeping it going. Um, so there was one they posted when they heard that uh, Harry Shearer was leaving, and it was like, holy crap, how old is this episode? Because it, like, it predicted exactly what happened. Uh, it was like Homer, just he was like sitting on the couch, and they're all watching TV, and he was like, he was talking about, oh, oh, this is an animated show. The, uh, networks love these because uh, they don't have to pay the actors, did they squat? And then Ned walks past the window with a very different voice, and he's like, best of all, you can fire the actors, and no one knows the deadly difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's some great foreshadowing. <laughs> the, uh, the thing is, though, is that the Simpsons voice actors, specifically, mm. are they, they get paid millions of dollars. Oh, yeah, big time. They, in fact, there was a, I don't know if you knew, knew this or remember it, about five, six years ago, maybe the Simpsons came out and said, "Yeah, we we might have to cancel the show because we just can't afford it anymore." Jesus, we're paying the actors too much. <laughs> and the actors came out and said, "Like, well, yeah, you're paying us a lot. We could we could take less, right? If you want." And then they're like, "Well, show's back <laughs> on," and they just took a huge pay cut because they were making so much free yeah. money. And they're voice actors. Yeah. Voice actors don't make that much mm. money. Man, that show is still just limbering on. It it is that that's the thing Oof. where I was going to go with is like, who cares about The Simpsons anymore? Yeah. Holy crap! That show should have ended long, long time yeah. ago. I saw a good few arguments saying, well, it's not really a show for us anymore. It's for like a new generation. But even then, I don't see the appeal of it as a child, apart from saying, oh look, it's Homer Simpson. Like that's my older brother or my dad's favorite character from TV. And that's yeah. about it, really, where you say, oh, it's this guy my dad likes, and then he's like, he's completely different to what? The newer generation likes Adventure Time and regular right. show and but, stuff like that. Why? why but th- those are good, though. You know, I can watch that and like, oh, this is oh, enjoying, yeah. but I can't watch The Simpsons and then compare. Like, it's 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 gone through such a change that, like, it kind of sours it a bit, where it's like, this isn't what... It's kind of like really liking birthday cake when you're young and then like not eating it for years and then you go back to it and it goes mm, this is really bad i hate this let me let me go back to when it was good you don't you don't like birthday well cake. that's a bad example because everyone loves birthday cake but you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> i mean i get it if birthday cake was bad then maybe I would... <laughs> <laughs> oh it's birthday cake well, it's, it's, it's... a coconut in or some shit Ugh, gross well the the well the thing is though is that it's not that you go back to those old episodes and you're like, Ugh. it's you go to new episodes and you're like, right. this used to be amazing. Right. That's the problem. Birthday cake hasn't changed. <laughs> the Simpsons has changed. This new fandangle birthday cake recipe. <laughs> I, I, me, I remember back when birthday cake was delicious. <laughs> <God>. No. <laughs> it's been so long. Uh, yeah, I suppose that's the thing with like old Simpsons episode. Everyone puts on like the nostalgia glasses at the same time. It's like, oh, I remember when this was good, you know. 
like to the classic episodes. Even even some of the like pre two thousand two episodes. Yeah, I'd say season... 98 to 02, even those are okay. I'd say seasons 2 to 9 are fantastic. Seasons 10 to maybe 13 are decent. Mm. And then just 14 on were just... what? Yeah, I think I think since when HD just nosedived, like, just so... Well, it was was bad before HD. HD was like 2007. What? So, way after I stopped watching, so... I, but yeah, you can tell when it's an it, when you see an HD Simpsons, you instantly change the channel. Whereas if you don't, you kind of wait there for a second. It's like, okay, when was mm. this? Oh, uh, whacking day! <laughs> Great, I'm gonna sit there and watch. Or, oh, Tony Hawk. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I, lo- I love that <laughs> whacking day episode. It's so funny. Whacking day. The, so the Barney go. Barney's just like <laughs> just hitting the floor. Ah, snakes! Snakes everywhere! And just Lenny's like, oh, you packs from for whacking day. <laughs> What's whacking day? <laughs> <laughs> or the episode where well that's the thing yeah you get whacking day or you get the episode where Bart's in a boy band or something yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean like and that wasn't HD no. that was just relatively later right. oh that was kind of funny too yeah. where it's just like I mean but, they they have their mo- I don't think the show's bad it's just it's, it's very it's man, very different was that show the greatest television show ever right. made and then now it's not mm. so that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. it's just I see. These characters that were in some of my favorite moments ever growing up, right? And they're just they're just not that anymore. It's just the show's it's just going through its pace. It's a zombie it's just joke, joke, joke. Out of context, yeah. joke. Out of context, joke. Um, I don't the worry. only way it can really uh, bring me back in is if it says, "Okay, we're canceling, or not canceling, we're wrapping up the show. This is it, final season." Then I would legit sit down and watch it and say, "Okay, I'd watch the final episode." I'll, I'll okay. The, I don't think I need to see the final but I, season. Yeah, you know, see, I feel like the Simpsons would kind of say, "Okay, the final season is the final episode." It's like we're going to build it up or something like that. Do kind of like a South Park thing where they do continuation or something like that. Because that's the only way I could see them doing it and be, what's the word, like, it, it, you know, sufficient enough because it's so long, so many seasons. You can't just wrap it up in one episode. I don't think that's going to be one of the biggest television events in history right? right there's no way that that is not one of the most watched television episodes of all time. yeah there's no way i mean it, it can't just just how many people have been affected by the simpsons in one right. way or another yeah right? from children to adults to in between right. and they're gonna watch in just they're gonna they're gonna tune in just to see which just how yeah. it ends they're just out of curiosity how these characters are gonna wrap up that i'm assuming it's going to happen sooner rather than later because the second a different voice comes out of Ned Flanders or Mr. Yeah. Burns. Did I don't know if people are going to be okay with that. Who knows? But yeah, like because I remember um, a while back they had the the one of the networks had this whole we're showing every single episode of Simpsons ever and like FX yeah the ratings were like crazy it was everyone was tuning into it and like tweeting about it and like even the writers got behind it and like tweeted a little behind the scene details. I watched it. and yeah I heard like. It was really cool, and I was so jealous I didn't get to watch it. But I was like... Oh, you didn't? Oh, yeah, because you don't have FXX. Yep. F- l- 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 f- X- All the way over here in ye old Ireland, we don't have oh. that channel, so yeah, didn't watch it. But... I mean, they borderline do it nowadays. Oh, anyway. yeah, yeah. We have, yeah. All weekenders, it's just Simpsons yeah. episodes like mad. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Every day at 6 o'clock, Simpsons, Simpsons is on. That's, like an, oh, that's almost an Irish tradition, actually. Every day, 6, six o'clock, uh, RT2... I won the channels. It was seven here. I used to watch Simpson reruns at uh, after dinner. There you go. That's it. It's like so ingrained in two, like our, our, it was our back routine. To back. It was an hour hour block of Simpsons. Ooh, that's good. Ah, Simpsons. Speaking of Simpsons, all right. They also have video games. They do have video games. Some of them are all right. <laughs> Hit and run ain't bad. Ain't bad. Hit and run's not bad. It, it, I wouldn't recommend playing it now, but you know. No. <laughs> uh, I. I never played the three, the Xbox 360 slash PS3. Oh, me neither. That came out. Mm, it's got to be like eight years ago. Oh, the movie game, right? Yeah. yeah. No, didn't play it either. I don't think it was a movie game. I just think it was the Simpsons game. Oh. It looks really yeah. nice. I remember the graphics being pretty impressive. Uh, so basically, Hit and Run and the Simpsons arcade game. Oh, what else? They had, they had, a, they had a load of games actually. Oh, they had a ton of games. They're all terrible. Uh, they had Road Rage. That was before Hit and Run, which I remember being... It was okay. It was basically Crazy Taxi. Ta- Ro- Road Rage was Crazy yeah, Taxi. Yeah, Crazy Taxi. That's exactly what it was. 
There was Simpsons Wrestling, yeah. which is one of the worst games. <laughs> and uh, Simpsons Skateboarding, which is... They had Simpsons Skate... I didn't know they yeah. did. I did not know, but... Uh, <laughs> then there's way back in the day, like, Virtual virtual Bart... Uh, like, Bart versus Space Mutant. There was a freaking buttload of them. I remember, yeah. And they're all terrible. Yeah, I remember seeing one that came out again recently on the Xbox 360. Well, not recently. I mean, like, a couple... Like, two years back or so. It's like this a virtual console or something. No, it came out. I can't remember which one it was, but it was the one where um, it was really old school because it had that bit where if Marge got electrocuted, you could see she had the bunny ears under her hair. Oh yeah, that, that that's the Simpsons arcade yeah. game. People like that game. I like that game. It's fun. Yeah. But yeah, anything basically <laughs> on the consoles. But yeah, the Simpsons do not have a good track record for video games. Let's just say no. They're, there, there have been a ton of them, and most of them are poor at best. I do remember playing, uh, somewhat related, the Futurama video game. Just pretty decent. I, I, I enjoyed it. Oh, uh, wait. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I remember I, that. I can't really remember how to describe it. It was it was fine. It was fun. It was basically a platformer, wasn't uh, it? No, it was like a 3D... Like a, it was a 3D platformer? Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Oh, was. Pretty much, yeah. 3D platformer. I'm just trying to remember. I was like, what was it? Yeah, and then you had like this one level where you're, you were like, like, I never played. Oh, it. you never. Played I might it. actually check it out, uh, but it was, I mean, it was I, grand. I was, was yeah, but when that came out, I was poor. Uh, yeah. Poorer than I. Am <laughs> I got it for my birthday. So, oh god, I made some bad game decisions for my birthday. Oh man, so yeah, you talk about the, I got Simpsons Wrestling for my birthday. Oof. And oh god, real bad. <laughs> you poor guy. But you still played the hell out we of it. Talk- that's, that's that's a given. Yeah, I did because that's what you do. That's what you had to do as a kid, and I also played, uh, or for my birthday I got the Rugrats game, uh, which we talked about on this very podcast. Hell yeah. Which was just basically segments of early episodes of the of the Rugrats, so. Yeah, it was pretty cool, the Search for Rap Star one. <laughs> in the Toy Store. Yeah, it was like, one section was in the Toy Store, right? Yeah, one uh, section, yeah. and then one was, you were playing hide and seek, and you, were, you played as Chucky yeah. without his glasses. Uh, mini golf. You had like an obstacle course one as well. All right, we're not going to be talking about the Rugrats. <laughs> talk about these <laughs> bad games. Right. Let's talk about some good games. Randy, what's, like, what's a good game? You, you, you wanna... The Witcher 3, is that what you're trying to get me? Oh, sure, okay. Yeah, go for it. The Witcher 3 is a very good game. Oh, is it? Tell me more. I'm currently waiting for my delivery because it's coming all the way from Australia. And it's because I ordered it online like an idiot. And then I looked down the bottom and said, this company is in based in Brisbane... Australia and I went well fuck me <laughs> because that means I won't get just it just bend me yeah. over <laughs> uh, if only you had a PC you'd get it way way early. that sucker unlocked like 8 hours here, before okay here's the thing right so on Monday I saw it online before we get into it uh, the whole Witcher channel I'll just talk about my this hatred of buying games online because I will I will never if I if, if I want a game straight away, I'm just gonna digital digital purchase it from now on because holy crap, uh, ordering like sh- true shipping and all that jazz is like. You have a P. Is it is it not digital on PS? Yeah, but it was so much more expensive. Um, really? Yeah, it was like I, I, I saved more? like I saved like a ten euro, fifteen euro, something like that. Which is like t- uh, is not an insubstantial amount. Yeah, it was it was enough to make me go like. No, I'm saying that's a, oh right. A sizable chunk. Oh, sorry. Um, so here's what happened. Uh, I was, I was like, I was looking around and I saw someone post on Reddit saying uh, they were in UK and they bought the Witcher Tree through the US Amazon or not Amazon? To, yeah, through the US Amazon store, the PSN store they have. I think the game was like, uh, I can't even remember now. It was like forty seven dollars or something like that because there was a ten percent off digital thing. I can't remember. Uh, so it was like forty seven dollars, which is which is like 45 uh, euro. No, it wasn't 45. It's was like 42 euro, something like that. Um, and I was going to do it, but I, I was kind of thinking, well, if I get it on the US store, it's going to be a whole malarkey if I want to buy the DLC or whatever. So I figured, do you know what? I'll just get the EU version. So if I want the DLC, I'll just pay for it in euro. All right. So I went to get it on the US or the EU PS uh, store, uh, just, you know, digital copy, uh, looked at it and I was like, nah, that's too expensive. I, I wouldn't want to be shelling out that much money because I, I like, I hate spending so much money on games. I had a look around, saw a decent deal and, uh, bought it. Waiting for everyone to get their packages then when they, it came out the 18, right? Um, 
uh, whatever Tuesday was. Right. I think it was. Well, anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, tech, on PC it came out on the 18th. Right. But it, technically, it was supposed to be out on the 19th. Well, here's the thing. Um, I, I, <laughs> I saw someone actually playing already, and I was like, oh, I can't wait for my copy to come. And it was like the the twentieth, uh, so yesterday, and I was like, "Huh, this game uh, should be here by now." Because I was kind of thinking, uh, I, I had that kind of fun moment of like when you order something and then you completely forget about it, and then you go, "Oh yeah, I forgot about that." Uh, I was hoping to have that, I hoping it. to have that surprise land on my front doorstep, as opposed to have me checking online, seeing a receipt, and saying, "Oh yeah, shit." Where's that game? That's why it's the best to order something and then just ignore <laughs> it completely. Because then when you eventually you'll. I love it when I leave and come home and it's just waiting. It's like a yeah, present. Yeah, for like, myself. <laughs> but yeah, I looked at it, looked online, and it said uh, the order was backed up. And I was like, what the hell does that mean? And they said, we've no we've no more copies. We 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 had too, we, too many people pre-ordered. We're waiting for a shipment to come in. Sorry, you have to wait. But they took your money? Well, they still have it coming, yeah. But it's, yeah. Did they ship no, it? No. Because it's, it's, uh, because what? they don't have it yet. It's back. The orders are all backed up. They're waiting to get through every single one of them. And, oh, and I'm like, this is cool. Would, can you cancel it? Uh, I don't know. I would look into that because that's messed yeah, up. Yeah, that's pretty shit. They took your money without letting you know that they don't have enough copies? Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Mm. If Amazon, do, Amazon does that occasionally, and then if they do, they shower you with riches because they feel so <laughs> Oh. I've gotten like $25 gift cards because there's like, oh, God, sorry. we didn't give it to you on the date we said we would. It's like five minutes late. Here you I go. got Well, I've got Diddly Squat, so <laughs> they didn't even give me an email. Oh, hey, it's backed up. No, I had to look up. And, Where did you order uh, I ordered it from, what was that site? It's called like Wow HD or whatever. It was like, uh, <laughs> it's, sounds pretty reputable. Yeah. <laughs> Dot com. <laughs> I know it is legit. I've ordered it from there before, but I've never. Got Geo Cities. <laughs> I've never pre-ordered a game from there before, and I was like, "Oh God, never again." <laughs> no. Oh yeah. So uh, yeah, that's my dilemma. I'm still waiting on my copy. So once it lands on my front doorstep, I'll just be like, "Thank you," and just like blow off what? the Australian dust from it and pop that sucker right yeah. in. All right. Well, what what possessed you to say I want to play The Witcher Three when you have not, to my knowledge, played the other two? Um, actually, I have no real idea why. Uh, it was kind of like, uh, the buzz? yeah, maybe a little bit because I was kind of like, uh, well, uh, no, actually, I can pinpoint when I want to play it. So I remember turning to my friend and said, "Oh man, uh, I want to play Skyrim again. I haven't played that in a while." And said, "I love an open world game where you can just do quests and shit." And then I was like, "But I kind of hated Skyrim. I didn't really like it that much." So I said, "Hmm." Oh, the Witcher Tree's coming out. What's that like? And I just looked. This is better than Skyrim. Yeah, I, I looked it up and I was like, hmm, open world quests, you know, that seems like something I'd enjoy. So I said, why not? So that's pretty much it. I was like, I want to play Skyrim without playing Skyrim. So I said, <laughs> I'll, I'll. The problem I have with Skyrim is that Skyrim is too open world. Right. And it's, it's, uh, intimidating, I guess, would be the word. Right. Or just, it's insurmountable. You you look at the map and you're like, there's just freaking no way I'm going to even, I'm going to do this, yeah. right? It's just, there's just too much crap. And then you stumble upon more crap. And you're like, Dad, this isn't, and a lot of it's bad. That's another thing is that you run into stuff and it's usually nothing. Yeah, it's, it sucks, like most of the time. Or it's the same. A lot of side quests are bad. Same dungeon every time the, or something like that. The Witcher 3 has fewer things and the things that are there usually matter. Right. Which is good. Uh, what? One of the early side quests that I did, and I just found this completely by accident. Mm-hmm. Or no, maybe, maybe I didn't. I might have found this on like a bulletin board or something. Right. Uh, and I'd go there, and his brother was missing. And you go there, and you ask him why his brother was missing. He's like, oh, he was, in, he was recruited in this army, and they just had this battle uh, not far from here. And he hasn't come back. And he's like, well, chances are he's freaking dead. <laughs> he's like, well, yeah, but if he is, I want his body, so... And then you're like, well, why don't you just go freaking get him? And he's like, well, there are there are monsters out there. I need to find. It. I can't fight the monsters. You're the mo- you're a witcher. You fight monsters, right? So you need to help me. And the the whole quest is you trying to identify his body with all these maimed bodies around. Ooh. And you're just like, is it is this him? And he's like, no, that's not him. And you go up to the what about him? No. And meanwhile, you're fighting ghouls that are trying to kill you. Just, just whatever uh, way you just deliver it out there. You just, I can see that as a sketch. Just him like picking up like. <laughs> The shovel corpse. Is this? Yo, no, I actually, yeah. Him? You actually go up to a burned body and you're like, uh, this will be hard to identify, but is this, maybe he's got something. Is this him? No. What about him? 
No. God. <laughs> Just really annoying. Yeah. Oh. I got better things to do. <laughs> Basically, dead well, body and, shopping sounds like. And you have the choice whether or not to be kind of a jerk, right? right. You, you you talk to people and you can be nice and be like, ah, don't keep your money. I don't need that. Or you can be like, no, I, I worked my butt off for you. you give me, give me. You only had dead bodies like this. Come on. <laughs> and I actually, I found myself doing that. See, this is freaking brilliant, and not a lot of games do that. Where in most games, I have the option to not take the money. I usually take that option, right? Because. You know, I want to be the good person or whatever. And this one, money is so scarce, and it's really important. Right. So when someone's like, "Here, take take what little money I have," I'm like, "Well, I mean, I did provide them a service, mm. and I, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be doing charity work here. This is my job. I gotta I gotta take money for my job. You know, I need, and you actually need food because in on the difficulty I'm playing in, that's the only way to heal is to eat. So I'm like, all right, well, I need money for food, and <laughs> it's like, all right, I'll take your money. And I and just the way that it is designed to make you think about that instead of just be like, no, I'm a good person. Right. You take, you keep your money. It's not usually like that, and it, and it's way more gray here. Which is the Witcher has always been good at that. It's it's always been good at. There's no right or wrong way. Just what do you? What would you do in this right. scenario? Try to figure it out. That sounds cool. And uh, the combat's good. Mm. I didn't. I didn't like it at first. I was a bit worried. It got better though. So, uh, I may have broken the game in terms of. So I did most of the side quests in the first area, maybe all of them. Right. And, and I didn't actually level up that much. And the the main quest requ- level requirement is level three, and I was like level two and a half. And I had done all the quests that I found. <laughs> I'm like, huh. I'm like, well, I'm just gonna go for it then. And I go to the the area where the main quest is and there's this uh, blacksmith there and I talked to him and apparently I had found a real uh, two recipes for really 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 powerful weapons <laughs> and they all both required level one for some okay. reason and it's like all right uh, you don't you have all the materials you need to make this weapon but you don't have the money so I'm like but that's really po- like disgustingly powerful I'm talking say the, the weapons that I've been getting had like 10 or 12 damage on him. This one had plus 32 from what I was holding. That's pretty good. So, that's like, <laughs> so I'm like, all right. That's like three swords at once. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, kind of. So, I'm like, I must have this. And I saved the game because I'm like, I, I'm, I can't go through all my items and do the math to see if I would get enough money right. to be able to make it. So, I saved the game. And if I sell everything and I still don't have enough, I'll just reload it. Save the game. I sold all my items. I had enough. I made that sword. <laughs> I made the other sword too. There's two swords. I made two swords. Uh, I do the main quest. The main quest is to fight this really big monster. Uh, so it's the first boss of the game. I freaking melted the first boss. Just it's disgusting. <laughs> I did so much damage. I don't think I'm supposed to have that sword yet. Oh. I did so much damage. And that was the question: is didn't hit- do you give the, like do you put the sword away in your inventory and come back to it later on, or? Well, no, because I earned that freaking sword. I found, I found that, I found that recipe. I found all the materials for it, and I sold all my stuff for it. I earned that sword. Mm-hmm. The but, game doesn't seem to agree with that. But now the game is very, very easy. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I might bump the difficulty up, which you can do on the fly, which is nice. Cool. Uh, that's a fun game. I had, acting's good for the most mm. part. The writing's better, which is weird. Because I. I mean, I guess that makes sense. It's the sequel, so you'd think it'd be better. Gorgeous. Holy crap, does that game look nice. It it does foliage better than any game I've ever seen. It moves. In The wind just makes that foliage move in such a realistic way that it just, it's weird. <laughs> you look at it like, oh, that's, that looks too good. Yeah. Uh, and then they have the, on the PC version, they have what they, NVIDIA Hairworks, which makes... Realistic looking hair. <laughs> it's Tomb Raider all over again. Actually, it doesn't look that realistic, and it kills your performance. So turn that off <laughs> instantly. Holy crap! It drops the performance drops so much just by having that on. What is with games and hair? It's that's that's so I weird. Don't know. Probably because we haven't gotten to a spot where hair looks good in video games yet. Somehow, mm. uh, I'm trying to think of a good example, but I really can't. The only game that I can think of that does hair well is Alice Madness Returns. I haven't played it. Which, for some reason, <laughs> is the only game I can think of where I'm like, oh, some decent Well, here's games. the thing. Uh, 
like hair in the game should be something that you don't notice. It's just kind of there. Like if you did it right, you shouldn't be looking at it and going, "Huh." Well, it's, right. If you're looking at hair, because you're not, yeah. <laughs> his hair is weird. People should have or his hair. His hair looks really good. It's like well, it looks too good. Yeah, because if it's too good a hair, then the it's contrasting from the rest of the body. Right. It's just it's it's a tough one. I would just give everyone short hair, immobile short hair, <laughs> or make them wear helmets, or. Or make people bald or wear something on their head. Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah, that Witcher 3 seems like it's going to be very mm. good. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited about I'm excited. I did not want to stop playing it. Oh, yeah, I, that's the crucial question. What, I, uh, did you, yeah, you just want to like keep playing throughout the night? I got, I got past where I think is the first area. I think I'm about to leave the first area, and I'm like... If I go to this next area, I'm not going to stop playing. <laughs> I'm just it's like, oh, you know what? That's because that's exactly how it happened. It was like, oh, I'll get to this guy and I'll stop. You right, know, that's yeah. Stopping point. It was like, oh, but but that guy told me to go right over. He's right there. I can just go right over there. It's all right. It's just. And then I talked to that guy. It's like, oh, but yeah, I you know I found this these items earlier, which is going to make this easier. I might as well just do that. Well, I <laughs> just didn't want to stop. So I'm just like, all right. If I go to this next area, I know that I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to keep putting these arbitrary stopping points on there. So I just need to stop right now. And I did. <laughs> Congratulations. I made, it, made it through a laugh. That is the sign of a good game, though, when it, you just can't put it down. You just want to keep playing it, keep pressing it. But it's not kind of like an obligation to keep playing. It's like, no, I genuinely just want to see what happens next. I want to see where this goes. What What happens if I go over here? All that kind of stuff. Like I was playing, uh, I was playing yeah. Resident Evil today. Yep. Uh, I ran out of ink ribbons, so I kind of had to play it for a hell of a long time until I discovered you ran out of ink uh, ribbons. That's got to be a frightening, yeah, thing. I because I think I just probably haven't been looking for them enough, and I mean, it was saving way too much. But I found a new section and ran in, uh, checked the map, saw there was a typewriter. I was like, yes, oh my god, thank god! I was playing for like nearly forty-five minutes at this stage, and I was shitting it. I was like, holy crap! <laughs> If I die, I have to go all the way back. Uh, I have to fight the snake again. Um, what else? The hunters, they're coming after me again. So, Oh, man, the hunters are brutal. In the, I, I was able to, in the original game, I was able to run by them just... Before we get on to the Resident Evil talks, I, I would love to talk sure. about it with you. why not? I recommend to you and anyone listening to play The Witcher... Well, it depends. What kind of person are you? Do you want hardness? Do you want a little bit of challenge, or do you just want to... Experience the story and the quest. What do you want? A uh, bit challenge. I'm I'm down for that. I would recommend playing on the second to hardest difficulty. Right. You can always change it. Right. But start with that because it, it it's hard, but at the same time the other difficulty is just too freaking. Right. Easy. I've heard that as well. Actually, like that exact same recommendation. Like the normal setting, you play a game at, uh, bump it up for the Witcher Tree, bump it up one level. Yeah. So because if uh, the the way the game works is that. On uh, normal, you get you can meditate and you can meditate whenever you want. There's no, there's there's no penalty to do it, and there's you can do it whenever, however many times you want. There's just do it when you want, and when you meditate, you get full health back. So theoretically, you could fight, take damage. As soon as you're done fighting, just meditate, and your health is back. On hard and up, you don't gain your health back from meditating. You have to use potions. You have to eat, and that just adds a whole. It just just by that, not not even counting the more damage or the tactics or whatever, just by that it makes you play the game so much differently, and mm. it's better that way. Because, like I said, if I if I could heal without without buying stuff, I would have just not accepted that money from that guy. Mm. Right? That w- I wouldn't have needed it because I could just rest and heal right. up. So I, that's really weird, actually. I've so, never heard of a game that just like you press a button, your health goes back to normal. No oh, rip. Well, that's a real. That's a really old PC RPG trope. Oh. Uh, like Baldur's Gate, you could rest and you would rest until your health is back up, and there would be no penalties unless you were around enemies, and then enemies will sneak up on you. Right. Whatever, well, I would get that in like uh, I'm just thinking of like Oblivion or Fallout, or whatever, where you just you go to a bed and sleep, and your health be back to normal. But yeah, same. But thing. what do you mean when you but when you say meditate? You mean you literally can stand. You I'm literally pressing. just sit down where you oh, are. Okay, yeah. See, that's a bit overkill there because if you can do it anywhere, then it's not so much. As, from from my experience, it doesn't look like there is any reason you cannot hmm. do it. So I don't know. All right. But start if you 
if if you find it too hard, you can always drop it down. Yeah, exactly. It on the fly. So, oh, and I love this is such a minor thing. I I said it to you in Skype. The fact that you can skip all the intro videos, all the logos. <laughs> Just it's such a minor thing, but I'm so used to just mashing on buttons, hoping to skip the intro yeah, like yeah. Nvidia and yeah. and the company logos like Capcom <laughs> or whatever. I get I want to skip you. I've seen you. I don't need it. Right. And CG CG Project Red is just like no, skip it. You don't want you don't want this garbage. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Just skip it, and you can skip it. You can get it within the game from loading up to playing within ten seconds. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's beautiful. The Bloodborne, what is this nonsense? Oh, yeah. It takes forever to get into the oh, game. Really? <laughs> loading it up. Have you played that? I game? have. Yeah. I th- the loading or the time. The, the loading ti- was brutal. The title screen is like engraved in the back of my mind. <laughs> like when I close my eyes, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's that's it with The Witcher. Let's let's talk Resident. Evil. Sure. Um, yeah. So as I was saying, uh, I had the whole. I can't stop playing with Resident Evil, um, which is interesting because you don't like horror. Yeah, I I kind of I kind of I like playing Resident Evil, but at the same time I don't because, like, it, it's kind of weird. Every so often as I'm playing the game, I kind of get a little bit of dread, like a little bit of fear, going, uh, I, I don't know what could be here. This could be a bit weird, you know. It's something spooky could be around the corner, mainly because I'm like, oh Jesus. Um, but every most of the time I'm just like, oh, this is fine. This is cool. I'm grand. It's just blazing past, you know, demon dogs and fucking crazy snakes and shit, but. Yeah, like I, I think the first time that I kind of got that bit of fear was when I was playing it, and I went out to the graveyard, um, and I was like, "Whoa, all right, this yeah. is a bit it's like, oh, this is a bit, ooh, it's a bit scary, you know." Like surprisingly enough, because I remember you saying, "Oh, that game's like not that scary," but I was like, "Oh, this kind of." You did say it was scary, but not not terrifying. Like, "Oh, shit, your pants scary," but, but I was like, "Oh, this is I'm kind of on edge playing this." Um, then I went out to the the cabin, and then uh, that person right. came in, Lisa, I think her name was. Uh, yeah. yeah, that fucking. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" That was <laughs> like it, it wasn't so much like terrified. I was just like, "This is fucking so weird." I just <laughs> that's also not to cut sure. you off, but that is also one of the best designed moments from a fear standpoint of all time. Because up at well, that's hyperbolic, but. It's really well done. You you read about Lisa all this time. You're reading about Lisa in the cabin. Right. And you you can peek through the window or whatever, mm. and you see her walk in. I don't know if you saw that, but you can see her walk in. You hear right. her. Right? You hear her yeah, come in the yeah, cabin you hear behind her. And, you. like, and if you look through the window fast enough, you can see her walk in, and you're just like, what the heck is that? But she doesn't come after you. You have to actually walk through the hallway to, to greet mm. her. So, on one hand, you either don't know what's coming after you and you're freaking out, or you see it and you're like, holy crap, that's around that corner and now I have to fight. Right. Yeah, it, it was, I didn't really read that much about it. And when it came out of nowhere, I was like, what the fuck? It was genuinely terrifying. That is all new for that one. It is not in the original game. Oh, world. no. Yeah, I remember. The, that whole graveyard sequence isn't. That, you, you know the part where you push the, the, I don't even know if that's in the remake, where you push the stairs up and grab the crank or whatever, is that? The part where you go out to the graveyard, right. the door that leads out to the graveyard, that that door is not there in the original game. Oh, okay. You just you just go straight to the the residence, the courthouse. Oh, okay. Um, which you said you got to. Where where are you up to? Now? I am. Um, uh, it's kind of. You're back through the. You said hunters, so you're back through the mansion. Right. Um, see, it's weird because I, I feel like you can kind of play the game a different, like. Eh, not I'd say kind of like it, really. yeah maybe not but like you can kind of do a checklist like oh I did this but I didn't do this um, okay so I am okay so I just met Enrique no some uh, this guy who worked for Stars Enrico? yeah Enrico yeah, and, yeah so you're you're underground yeah, now and he got shot you're getting close to the end of the game oh okay um, I've I'm looking for the steel casing for the metal object I think it right, right. because I, I remember seeing it earlier on uh, it's like under the, underneath the stairs in the main mansion when you walk in. It's like you put one right. octagonal thing here, and yes. then there's another one. I went to put it in, but it was like, it's not fitting. And I was like, wait, why isn't it fitting? And I was like, oh, I realized because it has like a casing on it or something. Yep. That uh, that messed me up because when I went back through that game recently when the HD remake came mm-hmm. out, I forgot about that middle casing, and I looked freaking forever oh, okay. for that freaking... I forgot where it was. I did not know. I've, I've been everywhere. Where the hell? You want to spare me the time and tell me where it is? Uh, I already forgot. Uh, 
I think I'm it's. Pre- uh, I, I could tell you. I could try to describe it to you. I don't. I think it's in the room off the main hall. Right. Where there's the room that it, the main hall with the the typewriter and the big grand steps or whatever. Mm-hmm. There's if you're facing. If your back is to the main door, the entrance. Mm-hmm. To the right, there are two doors. The one on the left, mm-hmm. I think it's in there. Oh, okay. I think you need the second key to get oh, in. Already. The, the second mansion. Oh, okay. Um, yes. Yeah, uh, if you've been if you've been in there, maybe it's not. Yeah, in there, I don't think it is because I, I, I was right. already I was already in there. So, uh, yeah. So there's something in there. Something could be in. There is something important in there. I think there's like a jewel box or whatever. Oh, I already got the jewel box. Yeah, yeah, I got. What was in the jewel um, box? Oh, I'm trying to think now. You used like a red, you had the red jewel on it that opened. Um, you had to rearrange the piece. I think I can't really remember now. God, was, oh, man. that game is like there's so much like puzzles and like, like I said, it's like, I said it last week. I think uh, it's like a giant puzzle. It, it just builds on itself, and you get all these things. And I, yeah. and it just keeps going. And I said it's a point and click adventure game with horror elements, and you can. <laughs> yep. And I still truly believe you, it. You die a lot, a lot. It's it's a bit. Um, at the start, I was kind of frustrated with it because I was like, where the hell do I go? And eventually you figure out, well, it, it becomes like a process of elimination when you get the, like the last key. And you're like, well, there's two doors and you can see that they're locked. So I assume I just go there. Um, it does, it doesn't really work outside the mansion too well, but you know, once you're in the mansion, you're like, okay, I have one key left and it says there's two locked doors. I guess I know where I'm going next. So. Right. The mansion is kind of the best of all it. The, all the elements combine combine in the mansion. I don't think it it's as good. It, it's there are, there are smaller sections off the mansion. The mansion is by far the biggest part yeah. of the game. It's really cool. But yeah, and then when you get to the residence, it's like a smaller mansion basically. Mm. I mean, it's it's a different area, but it's not quite the same. You're not juggling as many items around. You're not solving as many puzzles. Right. Um, same with the later areas. Yeah, so at the moment I'm underground and I'm trying to... Yeah, here's what happened. Uh, I was going to say before. Um, so I was playing the game, uh, got the ink ribbon, saved the game, then I had two ink ribbons left and it's like, okay, uh, do I turn the game off or do I keep playing? And I was like, you know what, I'm going to keep playing, see see what's see what's ahead. Uh, went in, um, got the crank from... I can't remember his name now. Enrico, Enrico, Enrico. thank you. Uh, came back, shot a bunch of hunters in the face because why not? Um, turned the crank, uh, it, it like changed the hallway so I could go across. <laughs> I, I, I just turned right and walked up and just said, it's a big rock. And I was like, uh oh. And then I just got squished. Yep. Oh. And I was like, huh, I guess that kind of decided the game for me. And I just turned it off. <laughs> you do, you do have to do that though. I do have to get squished. No, you don't get squished. You, you have to run from oh. the rock. Oh. And- Dodge out oh. of the way. You, the rock has to move. Great. I, so you have to, you you run up to the rock. You turn around and run forward, and, and the rock chases you. <laughs> and then you have to the, the rock the chases rock. you. He's, he says, what, you yeah, I was going to make that joke. <laughs> uh, this this <laughs> elbow drops you. Fuck. <laughs> you just run. Then you just get out. Of, there's a little alcove or whatever, and you where the door is, and you run over there, and the it rolls past you, and then where the rock was, there's like an item. Oh, okay. So uh, I, I, you said I'm pretty close to finishing it. Then you're reasonably close. Right. You got one more big area left. Okay, and then you will figure out whether or not you got the good or bad. Oh uh, no, there's not good and bad endings, is there? Oh yeah, there's there's five endings. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm gonna be mad. I just I, you're playing as who? Jill. Okay. Yeah, I, I can tell you now. I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> <laughs> There's one really binary choice right. that just do you do you want this character to die or not? Basically, is what the choice mm. is. It's not quite that explicit, right. but you'll know when you get there what it is. Uh, and there's something far less bi- binary that you actually have to do if you want to get the good. Oh, ending. Okay, I'm actually going to tell you what it is right now. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the items that you need. Sure, fire away. Or M O discs. Okay, I've got one so far. If you, you need. Three. Oh, great! There might be a, the two might be in the last area. I know there's at least one in the last area. Right. Um. Yeah. One was upstairs. Uh. In the second floor on the mansion, you had to put like the jewels in uh, Tiger's eye, and he like it's it's right. it's fun. And then like there was an M O disc, and I was like, huh, guess I'll take this because those are. 
useless outside of getting the better. Right. Good. Good to but know. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I mean, since you have them, you'll know where to use them probably. All right, so. okay. But if, if you didn't have them and you said, if you found the thing that said, insert the MO disc, you're like, what the heck? What are you talking <laughs> <laughs> So if you didn't find them, yeah. Mm. All right, I'll, I'll be interested. All right, yeah. I'll let you know. You yeah, so the whole gist was, like, I've never played Resident Evil, like, ever. I played a bit of it, but I haven't played, like, enough to be like, oh, I know everything about Resident Evil. And it's, like, my first time really getting into the, the deep end with it. And, yeah, it's really good, actually. It's very it's very enjoyable. Um, I think, I remember reading somewhere that, like, Capcom, they're, they're going to start focusing on doing... Uh, HD remasters, and I was like, I... Of course they are, because it costs them nothing, exactly. and it's sold like crazy. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, go for it. Do Resident Evil, uh, was it 2, and then Nemesis? No. 2? No, Nemesis is 2, right? I, I'm no, Nemesis is 3. three. The thing is, though, is that those games are old. You can't just upload... Those are beyond up uh, Yeah, yeah you need to, you you need to remake so, it. Which is beyond... Capcom. Not beyond their means, but it's they're not going to do that. <laughs> so they're... They already did an HD remake of four. I don't know what's left. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess Code Veronica is one of them that they could. Mm. Do. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I just, Resident Evil is just like it's fucking it's a crazy game. Like I'm I'm playing this game like no like barely any idea about Resident Evil. Like I've seen the movie. Uh, that's about it. They, those aren't the same. No, thing. no, I know, but I it gives me an idea of like oh I know what they're kind of all right I get it. It's, kind of weird zombie kind of thing but I'm playing the game and I'm just like this this I did not sign on for this like I've got giant spiders big sharks <laughs> fucking crazy <laughs> ass snakes chasing me around bookcases I, I didn't know what I was in for <laughs> yeah giant snake so giant spiders giant shark giant snake mm-hmm. are there any more giant thing? giant rock giant rock <laughs> any more giants I hope not plant giant oh plant. right yeah the giant plant there are giant bees. Oh, uh, gross. Pretty big freaking bees. Oh, but yeah. I, you got to the bees, right? I think so. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Some giant stuff. Yeah, they love to do giant stuff in the game. I mean, giant stuff is scarier than tiny stuff. Unless there's a lot of tiny oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, gross. Ooh. Just like ants eating you from the inside. Ooh, that reminds me of another game I was playing earlier on. What game is that? Mortal Kombat! Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, we are, we are kindred uh, spirits. Tell me, tell me about Mortal Kombat. Um, yeah, it's it's fun. It's very fun. It's like, this is coming from someone who doesn't really play fighting games that much, but kind of felt like, yeah, I could, you know, I could get on board with this. This looks fun. Plus, it was cheap as hell. I traded it in Shadow of Mordor and got it for like 28 euro, which is very cheap. In Shadow yeah, because I was I was done. I played the hell out of that game, like completed it. Such a good game. It was a good game, but you know, my enjoyment came to an end with it, so I had to trade it in. I I did enjoy Shadow of Mordor, but it actually it got really repetitive as the more I played it. I was like, it did, but the thing that it did was so right. Good. It's good, yeah. So, but um, yeah, I've been playing it. Um, yeah, the reason um. The bugs reminded me of uh, Mortal Kombat. Was there's one character in it called Devora. Um yep. Oh my god! Like she's a new character, and like her moves, like her move set and animations are just the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. <laughs> she's like, she, yeah, it's, it's like good. an insect spider kind of thing, and she's like, like one of the fatalities is like I'm not going to say who she did the fatality on, but like. Um, she <laughs> she literally just kicks. Uh, she no, she stabs him with her like what you call it, Thor- thorax. What you call those things? Like a pincer kind of thing. I don't know. Abdomen. No, 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 no. It's like the, it's like the spider kind of. It's a spider. I, oh, I don't know. Giant bomb just had this discussion, <laughs> and they couldn't come up with it. <laughs> um, they said so one of them said mandible, but that's no, that's like, like clicker thing, right? Like feelers. No, no. I don't know. These these giant. Fucking insect arms. <laughs> These insect hands just like reach through someone's chest and their head and just like pull out their brain and heart and then she grabbed them with her normal hands and just like smushed them together like they were fucking pastry. It was like, holy crap. <laughs> it just exploded into red you, mist. Yeah. So it was like, Which is unnecessary because they're dead. Yeah, it was like, oh, okay, so. calm down. <laughs> That's the thing about the Mortal Kombat fatalities that are so funny to me is that those people are long dead by the time they're done <laughs> yeah. with <that> <laughs> They just keep going. 
It's like, okay, I know you don't feel any of this anymore, but I'm just going to keep hacking away at your body <laughs> until you're just a head on your feet. Oh, uh, God. Yeah, the game is, like, it's it's super fun. Um, it's a fun game. I just... I, yeah, disappointed. Did it? How so? The, I thought the story was nonsense. <laughs> in a bad way. Oh, okay. I way. was like, well, this is Mortal Kombat. I mean... The... DLC stuff is out of control. Yeah, in that no, game, that it might yeah. be the worst case of DLC I've ever seen. Yeah, I agree with you there. That is, you, you load up the game, the very first thing is buy, buy Goro. Buy now, like, screw buy you, buy Jason. I'm like, no, please. If I don't want to buy him, stop trying to make me buy him. Like that's like it was the same with um, Shadow Motor as well. Actually, it's like, oh, you know, buy the new DLC, and I'm like, no, leave me alone. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want. <laughs> yeah, at least Mortal Kombat. I mean, Jason is a big, substantial piece of right. DLC. A character is is something. Whereas Shadow Mordor, the the big thing about that game was the Nemesis system, and the DLC added nothing. Yeah, it was so just a reskin, basically. Just more story stuff, which is the which was the worst part of that game. Right. The story yeah. stuff was the worst part. of Oh that game. god, that game story more. was so bad. Right. It was right? so so bad. It's not a good. It's, it's no. It was not good. It ended. The final boss battle was a quick time event, basically. That, that is... No, I mean, not basically. It totally Pretty was. much just... Uh, no, I you say pretty much. No, it totally was a quick time. I thought you had to, you had to like, hammer him down a little bit, and then all of a sudden, ah, uh, uh, yeah, you? I'm pretty sure. I don't remember. And then just quick time. Oh, shit. It was... Oh, God. Like, here's the thing. Um, it, I kind of, like, coming away from that game now, I feel like the reviewers were super generous in terms of... Um, I still really like. I liked it too, but I I remember seeing like tens and nines. That game is definitely not a ten or a nine. It's the Destiny syndrome, sort of not quite the same, but it the Nemesis system. It does, yeah, first it does something different, kind of. Right, it does something different and new, and it does it well. It it outweighs yeah, kind of the, dazzles the you stuff a bit. that it did wrong. Right. So, but but I mean, I, I guess for me, it's kind of like. I'm, pl- I'm playing this game as it is. I'm not kind of playing it as a seed for like, what can this game do for future games? I'm playing it as it is and I'm like, whoa, God, this game has a lot of, as cool and neat ideas thrown in here. It is very old school. This is rubbish design. But it also had, I, I don't know. I think, I think it's better than most of the Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed. Plural. <laughs> Possessive nouns and one more, but uh, yeah, I just to the the highs that that game had outweighed the crappy stories. Right, and just the the dynamic stories that it told for me, which was cool. I I will never forget uh, what's his name. I'm kidding. <laughs> I actually don't remember. Tal- Talion. I lost it. I had it for a Talion. second. No, not Talion. The the orc that followed me around. Oh, it was okay. like the Same name as Ren. Ren Horik. <laughs> Ren Stimpy. <laughs> it's like the worst orc ever. So it sounded like Ren Horik. Right. That's his name, and it was Horik. So Horik kept following me around. He was. He ended up being my nemesis at the end of the game, which was actually well, that was kind of a cool moment. See, for me, uh, I couldn't remember who my nemesis was. So at the end, I was like, oh, "Who's this guy?" Because like, they they all kind of look similar. And I was like, "Oh, okay. oh I, I, it says his yeah," name. but I was like, "I don't remember. I haven't fought him in a while." So, oh, yeah. <laughs> he's been dead for a real long time. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure you literally chop their heads off and they come. Yeah, back, so yeah, it's a fun game for sure. But like you know, it, the story really let me down. I think, which is which is interesting enough because like <laughs> they actually have a mode in the game where they're just like ah screw the story, just just do all this like uh, the yeah. nemesis uh, system stuff. Like just just do all that, possess this guy, make this guy your bodyguard, do all this stuff. <laughs> also, I I am down for more Batman light combat. I'm still not sick of that. I still like it. Uh, you don't like the combat? Uh, it's 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 okay. I mean, you don't like the Batman combat, or you don't like the combat? Um, I don't know. It's kind of like it's weird because it's like when the new Batman combat came out with Asylum, it was like, oh, this is so cool. This is the new thing. But now that everyone's done it, it's kind of like, eh, well, I'm so used to it Has now. Has everyone actually done it, though? Mm. Other than Shadow Mordor and Batman, name a couple. I can name one right Sleeping now. Dogs. Sleeping Dogs is another one. Okay, there's two. I'm pretty sure... I, I, I'm, I, Captain America did it. <laughs> it, was the one, it was the one I was thinking of, and that game sucks. So. Well, it didn't suck, but whatever. Mm, uh, actually, no, maybe you're right. I, I just feel like it... it, it 
maybe I've seen elements of it in other games. Definitely, I've, I'm yeah. pretty sure I've seen it in like Assassin's Creed at some point where it's kind of like. I mean, other other games have definitely done it. It just I don't think it's as frequently as. I mean, how many games freaking do you aim down the sight and shoot? Right. But no one complains about that. It's yeah, just that, I guess. Maybe maybe yeah. I'm more thinking of in terms of strictly to Batman games where it's like uh, Batman. Arkham Asylum, it introduced it, it was really good. City introduced it a bit, uh, added a bit more to it, where it's like they had shields and like, you know, the gadgets were. And the du- the double counter is a big right. deal. Right, yeah, yeah. Double takedowns. And, and then Origins kind of didn't really add too much to it, really. It, it Electric the, Yeah, insta kill button and triple uh, dodge. And I think the newest one, Arkham Knight, has a really weird thing, actually. It has this, like, a. Uh, you know, you kind of you're you're playing the game and you like kick one of the enemies up in the air. And you like and then you press a button and all of a sudden you're Nightwing and then you kick him down. It's like and then you're playing this Nightwing. Yeah, that I I hope that's optional. I have no desire to do right. that. Right? Yeah, I, I, I'm the same because I'm like if I'm gonna be Batman, I'll be Batman. I mean, come on. That's, yes. <laughs> Why would I settle for anyone other? It's Batman. Right. I'm number one. <laughs> Why would I want to be anyone else? But like, it, it, that's why I was stupid in Arkham City when I would switch over to Catwoman. Like, this isn't Batman. I really like those sections, actually. <laughs> and from a story perspective, they were fine. But the traversal is a bit weird, actually. The second, the second you started fighting, you're like I'm not Batman anymore. Right. <laughs> I don't have the gadgets. I don't, I'm not cool. Right. Um, yeah, but like that's the thing. Like the the jump from uh, Arkham City to Arkham Origins wasn't that noticeable. But the jump from Origins to Arkham Knight is huge. They're definitely like making people notice. Okay, the combat's a little, a big bit different this time, as opposed to oh, we have another guy that will hit you this time. It's like no, no, we actually have a no, whole other person involved. So we'll find out in one month's time. Yeah, man. Oof. I'm excited. I'm excited too, but I'm more rated M excited. Yeah, I'm interested to see how it play, plays that- out. Rated M is a freaking huge deal to me. That what kind of that just why is it rated M though? I can't remember. I don't. That's like intense violence or some bullcrap like okay. that. But to, who cares? Now that it's rated M, they can do whatever. They want. <laughs> I really want to see like a proper like M rated Dark Knight Returns Batman game. Like just holy crap, this is so brutal. <laughs> like MK levels maybe. of holy shit, this is. Well, I, don't know, I wouldn't go. There. Well, yeah, maybe not. But like proper Batman's kind of teetering on. He's on the way. Not even teetering. Batman's a dark freaking <laughs> character, and it's in a dark world. Right. The fact that every mainstream thing about Batman has always been trying to keep it below what it should be suck. Kind of mm-hmm. sucks. I mean, the Nolan films are dark, but they should be darker. The PG thirteen, they should be R because that's the subject. Right. Man. Yeah. I don't know how Dark Knight was borderline R. I don't know. They, they got lucky on that one. Yeah, that game was that game. That film was like, there was a lot of the film. Film. That movie <laughs> was very dark. <laughs> I mean, like there's a lot of like very disturbing sections in it. Like, pretty, like, yeah. the, like the way they got away ooh. with it is that there was nothing explicitly shown. It was all right. cutaways and implicit. Stuff. Uh, there's a lot of gross stuff in it though. Like the, the pencil thing. That was pretty gross. Yeah, but they don't show. No, it. no, they don't show it. But it was they like, oh shit! Go, they, <laughs> they see a guy go down head first on where a pencil was, but you don't see right anything being in. But yeah. yes, oh, but somehow that's worse. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Think, it's like, oh shit! Where did the pencil it. go? <laughs> it's inside him now. He's one with the pencil. Um, also, the bit where he leaves the uh, the Chinese guy. Um, I can't remember his name. Feck, uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, oh, he he like leaves him on a pile of burning money, and it just like cut away. It was like holy crap! He just burned yeah. someone alive. <laughs> um, that's sad because I just watched that movie and I can't remember what his name. Was. It doesn't matter. Oh, that section where uh, he did the sky hook thing was so freaking cool. Yeah, it great. yeah, it was awesome. It reminds me of the original, not original, but the nineteen eighty nine Batman, where Batman goes through the. He's flying his plane. He grabs the balloons with his with his plane. <laughs> And Joker's like, my balloons. He stole my balloons. <laughs> oh, God, it's got flashbacks to Spider-Man 2. Where Why? the kid, like, loses his balloon in the game. Where he's like, my balloon. And you to, like, oh, in the yeah, game. Okay. And you have to catch the balloon. You're like, oh, fuck. I hate this guy. But if you, if you like, like press the circle button to do, like, a web zip, he would, like, shoot the web at the balloon and it would just burst. And then all I'm going to hear is just the kid crying. You're like, oh god, I'm so evil. 
but so good. <laughs> How would a web hurt, like pop up? I don't know. I guess if it was going fast. Yeah, I guess. It. And I, I guess it has to be strong too if it's swinging a man. Around. Yeah. Oh god, there hasn't been a good Spider-Man game in so long. I would argue that none of the Spider-Man games were. What? Published. Really, I didn't like those other ones. Wait, uh, Ultimate Spider-Man was pretty good. That was the comic book one, the really sure. one. It was good. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't know. I don't... Whatever. You been playing anything else? Um, I've been playing some Drive Club, which is wait. cool. Oh, wait. I guess. I should sure. probably mention before we move on, uh, I started playing Batman Arkham Asylum again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's get into that. Dri- uh, Drive Club's pretty... Um, it's cool. That's about it. It's pre- oh, does it work now? Uh, yeah, I've not had that much that much issues with it. Okay, uh, I, that's all we need yeah. to say. It's cheap. It's cheap as hell now. I'll I'll let you know. Bec- Do you like it? It is. Yeah, for what I paid for it. Yeah, if I paid sixty, what did you pay for? I paid it? like twenty euro for it, which is like twenty three dollars right. or something like that. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Get it for that price. Is it though? For that price, yeah, <laughs> sure. I sure, wanted an okay. arcade game. Yeah, to, as long as it works. Yeah, I wanted an arcade game to muck around in for like an hour or two. Was it arcade? It's kind of. It it's kind of like a, no. It's more arcade than simulation. Oh. But like you can jump in it for like two hours and then go. Oh, okay, that's fun. And then switch to another game. <laughs> so it's grand. It's a good. It, I mean, you could you could do that with any yeah. game. But it's yes. like the after it's like the after dinner mint of video games. <laughs> it's like <laughs> okay. you know I'm playing Mortal Kombat. Uh, I guess I'll put on some Drive Club. Oh, have my fill of that. Oh, play on some. The dessert is Resident Evil HD. <laughs> There what a go. time to be alive! <laughs> These two ultra violent courses, right? <laughs> uh, you played Arkham Art Asylum. Asylum. I did. How great is that intro? Can I just say? How great is that game? It's, Holy crap! Great. I'm just thinking about. I, I talked. I think I actually talked about it on the podcast. But it's crazy how that game does not allow you to be stupid because you're Batman. Oh right, yeah, so I remember. We, because when you when you jump off the when a, when you jump off a building that would otherwise kill you the fall would otherwise kill you he opens his cape enough right at the end so you don't die uh, when he uses the explosive foam you can stand right next to it and blow it up and you just kind of jerk his head <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's, that's my favorite bit he's like I just got a fucking explosion in the face oh <laughs> that kind of hurt <laughs> but, no but you okay, imagine if they had designed it so to where you could be you can make Batman look like an idiot you can't do that that's not his character right. Batman doesn't screw up and so you can't <laughs> screw up and um Another one, you know, when you fall in like the Joker gas, or you fall into an endless pit, or something like that, and it gives you oh yeah, escape. Thing, like press the yeah, escape. Yeah. It takes four. I I actually waited, and I'm like, what if I don't hit the button? Because I wanted to know. Because I've never, right. I never did it because it's yeah, it's, yeah, it's just like fail. instant X quick. It does. It, you do eventually fall, but it takes forever. <laughs> You'd have to be really stupid to try <laughs> to somehow screw that up. Um, you just get really philosophical pay, with it. It's like press F. And, I, and I'm thinking, I, I just got done playing a different game too, right. which oh, Maximo Ooh. for the PS2. I don't know if you ever I played. I haven't. No. Well, either way, it, it was. So I, I was thinking a lot about penalty of death mm. because Maximo basically you you die and you lose all your upgrades and it sucks. Ooh. Uh, in Batman, I'm like, what's the penalty for death? And I thought about it. It's one of the greatest penalty of deaths that they could have made for that game. And it is, number one, you screwed up as Batman. Mm-hmm. So that in itself is a big deal. Number two, the villains come over there and they freaking mock you to your face. Yeah, that's pretty great, actually. That sucks. And you're like, no, I'm freaking Batman and you just beat me. <laughs> you won about it and you're rubbing it in my face. Mm-hmm. How cool That's is that? Great. It's such a minor thing, and I didn't even think about that. I'm like, because <laughs> I, I screwed up. I got cocky, and a, a freaking goon hit me in the back of the head with a pipe or something, and I died. I was like, oh god, I just, I just got, I just got greedy. I kept mashing the button, you know. I wasn't right. timing it, whatever. It was my fault. It's like, ah, oh, whatever. I'll do it. And I was annoyed. And then the Joker comes up. He's like, yeah, little bats are sleeping. And I was like, oh. I hate you. you I, I just, I was so mad. I'm like, wait a minute. That, that's it. It's not a big deal because it's a, it's got checkpoints and everything. It's just an interesting way to make you emotionally 
it, it penalizes you emotionally. It doesn't do it in a gameplay sense because checkpoints are pretty generous in that game. So it's not the big a, a big deal. Mm. But you're just so mad that you screwed up because Batman doesn't screw up. The game teaches you that Batman doesn't screw up the way that the the opening, like you said, he, he comes in, he's like, uh, the Joker let me capture him too easy. There's no way that this is, this is he, he's, he's planning something mm-hmm. on Batman. And <laughs> just trust me. Damn it, Jim. And he just, he just always has it figured out. There's never a moment where you're thinking Batman is... He, he freaking goes through the Scarecrow sec, uh, sequence, which is awesome, by the way. The, scare, the Scarecrow mm-hmm. sequences. And after he's done with it, uh, Oracle calls you up and he's like, Batman, are you okay? He's like, yeah, I just... I had a little run in with Scarecrow. It slowed me down. You just went through this freaking emotional wild ride. <laughs> and he's like, oh, it just slowed me down a little bit. Because you're freaking Batman. Mm-hmm. And the game just repeatedly... T- even if... It, Someone that has never experienced Batman lore before, which you'd have to be some kind of weird person to not have experienced Batman or know what it is or whatever. The game does such a good job teaching you so many things. No, it, it teaches you how good Batman is at everything. It teaches you that he just always has it figured out. It teaches you the relationship between Batman and Joker. By that opening, you know, they it's like, oh, we've done this before. And, you know, it, they just... You have to make everything as if it's... The first, you know, as if no one knows what you're doing. You have to say, oh, so any person could walk in having never seen Batman before and could play this game. So we have to teach them. And it just does such a good job of teaching this these established, it, all the characters that they they have and they teach them really quick, just real quick things. Uh, and the bios pop up, every, which you don't have to read or listen to if you don't want to, but if you want to, it's right there for you. So you get a little background on them. But even so, it's just... And the Riddler stuff is really great. The game is amazing. Mm. This game is so good. If I had a critique about that game, I got a couple. But the main one is that the the stealth sections don't hold up as well. And it's not me being uh, stealth. <laughs> it's the fact that the gargoyles are just out of control. There are too many of mm. them. So you're just... I'm just going to fly around the room on the guard. Why would they build so many gargoyles in any place, let alone this asylum? Just, oh, you know what this room needs? More gargoyles up in the ceiling. I mean, no, but all right. Eventually Batman's going to need to be here. And for some reason, the goons never look up. Despite Batman grappling up to the group. It just doesn't make mm. any sense. I don't know. Well, like I try I try to get past the stealth sections without using the... Yeah. Gargoyles. I mean, personally, uh, like I love the cell section in the game because, um, like you said, the whole time you're playing, you are in the constant state of mind where you're like, no, no, it's not me playing the game. It's I'm playing Batman. Like Batman is, it's it's you. You are Batman basically. Like this is what happens. You don't mess up. You always know what you're doing. Um, and the cell sections really bring out the kind of the fear element that Batman can. Conjure, oh, yeah. which I love because there's so many ways. Like, what happens is you walk in the room, there's guards walking around, oh, yeah, hey, Mr. Joker told us to go to this place. And, you're, and they're all like, <laughs> you know, oh, we'll get the bat. Yeah, it's just like they're, they're just like fucking talking shit. And they're like, you can turn on your detective vision, their heart rates are like perfectly normal. Yep. And. Oh, that's another critique I have, but go ahead. Uh, is it the x ray vision, basically? It is the fact that you. You very rarely play that game outside of Detective. Which is a shame because the game is really good. It looks really good. There's so much detail like everywhere. And and you're just, you're playing with like X rays. I want to say right, and I I want to say it gets better in the later games, but I think it does because I don't remember it being this big of a problem in the later games. It's ridiculous how I mean, and why wouldn't right. you? Because it's so helpful, and you might miss a secret or whatever, so you want to keep it on. It's too. It's but too it good. Sucks because yeah. <laughs> It's too. Helpful. It's too good. <laughs> um, yeah. So like, the, like, and then you, you get to like pick off the enemies one by one. Then they say, "Oh, someone's over there." Like that's the great part. Like the Joker or whoever is always yelling on the intercom, like, "Oh, you, someone's down over there!" And you're just like, "You idiots, better get him!" And like, even he like isn't helping the situation because he's like antagonizing them even further. Oh yeah, that's another thing that they teach you about the Joker is that he yeah. just, he just wants to have yeah, fun. Yeah, I mean, that's it's and, great because he's just he's constantly on the screen and just like making jokes, cracking wise, and you're just like you're trying to deal with this like situation. You're trying to take out a room 
of bad guys and he's just like oh you better get someone clean up on that or whatever just like it's great <laughs> it's it's really it's just yeah like you said it shows the relationship of like or, or not even relationships like the characteristics of these car- these people they're like the, the Joker is like he's always going to make fun and Batman's like oh I have to be level headed and really focus on what, what I'm doing but yeah and he he doesn't spoil or I mean he he he, he pops up and says like I'm not going to spoil the fun by letting the guards know that you're on your way that'd be that'd be boring it just it shows you the Joker's motivations which you could argue if this were not the Joker then you could say, oh, that's just a gameplay trope. Of course the villain would... No, this is the Joker. Of course he would do that. That's exactly what the Joker yeah. would do. He would be like, no, this is fun. I want to see you mess these guys up. These guys are nothing yeah. to me. Maybe they'll get you, and that's great, yeah. too. Who knows? It, it, it's <laughs> more fun that way. Yeah, but like the the best part about the stealth, sec- the stealth section is the fact that when there's one guy left in the room... And he is just losing. He's losing he is it. That's so his good. Pants. He's walking around. He's shooting off in the Anything, air. He like, hears, like, especially, I, I, I don't know if they added this in. Uh, I don't know if this was in Arkham Island, but in the later games, when like a pipe would like let off some steam, he would just turn around, and shoot it. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh Jesus, what was that? And it's like, yeah, that that is, that is definitely there. It's so good. And, so and good. you were just like, you can do anything you want. Basically, you can just jerk this guy around. You can walk up to him, run past him. Even if you run past him, he'll get scared and, go, ah! and take a second to react. Yeah. From a thematic standpoint and from a Batman standpoint, you're absolutely right. The stealth sections do exactly what they need to do. Just from a pure gameplay standpoint, though, it bothers me. The gargoyles. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get you. It's an easy way out. And the, the, I mean, later on, they make it so you can't use them. Right. Well, you can use them as a briefly, and then they explode. I will say the difficulty ramp in that game is just about perfect. They introdu- Just as you get comfortable fighting the new things they introduce, they introduce something mm. new. Like the, oh, all right, I'm getting good at the stealth thing. Oh, well, now there's these collars that if I knock a guy out, they'll, it it alerts right. the rest of the guys over. Or now I'm getting really good at fighting. Oh, now this guy's yeah. knives. So now I need to stun him before. I, see, it just adds stuff at such a perfect yeah. pace. And it's interesting because, like, they kind of car- they kind of nailed that sense of pace and increase in difficulty um, and put it in a boss fight in Arkham City, the Mr. Freeze boss battle, which is basically which that. is so good. I love that it, boss it, fight. It's like if you you get comfortable doing one move, he he does something so you can't do it again. And you have to switch it up and try something different. Which is what should, which is what exactly what every boss fight in video games should right. do. Is like, oh well, he he hurt me this way. I'm gonna not do that. Yeah. Anymore. It but it bothers me like in God of War when you're fighting this massive thing or whatever, and he he goes through his routines that you have to dodge and then. Well, now that you did that, I'm gonna. I'm a big towering thing. I'm gonna put my head down where you can attack it. No, no, just smash him with your hand or something. You know what right. I mean? Like the only reason that he does that is because it's a video game and the player needs to be able to hit yeah. you. But Mister Freeze is like, no, son, <laughs> I, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not doing. Yeah. And, and it's very, very good. Yeah, I just. But yeah, the stealth sec. The what? So every stealth section I do, I don't ever. I don't ever use the batterings or whatever so mainly i'll either use the inverted takedown mm-hmm. which is the best might i say yeah, it is it's is great it's like the iconic batman takedown yeah <laughs> or i'll just wait until they're alone and sneak up behind him and choke him out yeah the, those are i i don't ever use the explosive gel or whatever the, just, with the walls or whatever yeah. yeah yeah who would freaking yeah. do that it's just it's too much effort when you can, it's too much. Yes, it takes too long. You'd have to either call them over there, which is an upgrade, or you can wait until they get over there, maybe. Mm. But well, yeah. I mean, that's the kind of that's one kind of gripe I have with the the challenge rooms. With when it comes to the predator challenge rooms, um, there are a lot of them are timed, right? Well, are yeah, they, they are timed, but you have to do the, the challenges they give you within the time. But I'm what I was saying was that if you compare that to um, the combat. Uh, challenges where you just have to get the highest score, but you can do it however you want. You, you know, you can do these amount of combos. You can use your gadgets, whatever. But you can't do that for the stealth section. You just you have to do these specific things um, in a, this amount of time. But what I would prefer right. is if you could do whatever you wanted in a specific amount of time. So if you just went up to everyone and just like just snuck up behind them and, and choked them out, that would be perfect. Because then I'd be like, okay, let's see, I'll see how fast I can do it. As opposed to oh, I have to go over here and map this thing out, put the gel here, wait 10 seconds, and he walks over it, boom, then move over to this guy and do this takedown. Like, I know, it, it, I just don't think it's very fair. Like, you don't get the same kind of 
tit for tat kind of thing with the combat versus predator uh, challenges. Again, it's really kind of very small thing to nitpick, but if that's the way I would play it, where it's like if if the game is so yeah, you can do it. You know, you can do combat however you like. I should be able to do stealth how I like, as opposed to yeah. oh, you have to use a glass takedown or whatever. I'm like, I've never done this before in the game ever. Why do I have to do it now? <laughs> yeah, I like the stuff as someone that does not typically like stealth. I th- I think it is good stealth. Right. I just the gargoyles thing is what it's, it yeah, drives yeah, me crazy. Yeah. It's so out of control <laughs> that you could just just it doesn't make any sense either. Why doesn't anyone ever look up? Right. It's freaking Batman. Of course he'd be up in the freaking rafters. <laughs> that was me when I played uh, Splinter Cell. I was like, I was in the, sh- the shadows. It's like, how does no one see these three giant glowing green <laughs> fucking lights? How is he getting away with this shit? <laughs> he's, he's got yeah. like three night lights on his head and he's just walking around. No one notices this? Come on. <laughs> I like the little beep noise. Oh, yeah, that's great. Uh, that game, and, you know, this, the sense of place that that game has, Arkham Asylum specifically, uh, just the the connection of that wor- that not that world but that asylum mm. I guess the the way you loop around it it it's built in a way that makes sense for an asylum but also designed in such a way that it's interesting to traverse mm. uh, it it just feels really good the way that the way you unlock new areas by getting new gadgets doesn't feel like the crappy way Metroid does it which is find this one spot on the map that you couldn't get to earlier. But you don't know where it is, no. And Batman is like, you're going to loop around there eventually, so don't worry about it. You'll get the you'll get the item you need, mm. and then if you want to go back and explore, you'll find the Riddler stuff. And that it it's just it's so good. It's such a good game. Yeah, um, I was going to say that now. I can't remember. <laughs> um, yeah, I like the way like there's a lot of kind of standard traversal in the game, where it's like, oh, you have to go to this point over here. And do this, um, like you're you're at a point A. You have to walk through these alleyways, or I can't remember. There's little kind of doors, and there's like there could be enemies in them. There could not, yeah. yeah. And you could get to point B. Um, I like the way the game kind of like changes it up a little bit as you play. Like I remember one section where I was going through, and it looked like there was a like a big bunch of paramedics, and I was like, why is there so many paramedics here? And then they all turn around. It's all the goons dressed up. And you're like, whoa! And it just like comes yeah, out of yeah, nowhere. Yeah. It's so cool. You're like, I did not expect that at all. <laughs> oh yeah, and there's a, another section where it's where it tells you to. I don't remember where, where it tells you to uh, the the main hall or whatever. Go into the main, find a way into the main hall, and you go into the main entrance. Yeah. And there's two goons standing on the side of the electric fence or whatever. You're like, ha ha! It's Batman. Yeah, you can't yeah. get in here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're like, oh, no, I'm gonna <laughs> you, get in there. <laughs> yeah, then but then you get in there from the. Of course, the yeah. roof, and you listen to him. He's like, "I can't believe he actually left." <laughs> Weird. I guess. I guess that's maybe bad. Yeah. is not that tough after I, all. And then you try, It's the yeah. bat. <laughs> <laughs> Two things: the so way that, like, I love that they, they say the bat in the game. It's so great. The bat. It's perfect. Like they, they could say Batman. They do say Batman, but when they say the bat, it just makes you like ten times cooler. But also, one of my favorite things about like stealth games is when you're sneaking around and you overhear or like eavesdrop in conversations. And I think um, like Arkham, the whole Arkham series does it really well. Like to the point where in Arkham City, if you were just flying around, you could pinpoint like a mile away someone's conversation and just and just yeah. hear them saying like, "Oh, it's so freaking cold." And you're just like, "There's you know, there's no real reason for that to be there apart from." Just it makes the world seem real. It's like, oh, it's this this yep. guy over here, and he's kind of cold. I should probably fly down there. And just, you know, knock. there are a few scenes where, um, there are goons talking to the Joker on like a, an intercom right. or whatever, and you go you go up to if you choke them out while they're still talking to the Joker, the Joker actually comments like, oh, "Did the back get to you?" <laughs> yeah. uh, so, um, such a freaking good game. Uh, one of my favorite bits though is at the end the, the last boss battle was very I think the boss battles were the only thing that kind of let it down they were just too gamey I'm, I'm, you're right I'm thinking of the Bane I one I like the Poison Ivy one except for the part where I, the Poison Ivy one is good except for the part where it does exactly what I just said that God of War does right yeah yeah Poison Ivy's wrecking your world and then she decides to come and taunt you I guess why would you ever yeah. do that it just doesn't make any sense but uh, aesthetically the Poison Ivy one's actually Actually, the Killer Croc one is the one that makes the most freaking sense. Yeah, that one was actually 
pretty. I thought it was. I, it's, pe- it's super tense. T- yeah. oh, people hate it. I, I, yeah, I liked it too because it was like, like I'm hardly going to fight him like one on one, which you do you do in Origins, and it wasn't that good. Like it was the first boss battle. I'm like, eh, I'm actually glad. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, I hated that. Yeah, it was fight. like the first fight. And you're like, oh god, <laughs> this shows you why you you should be glad that they didn't have this in um, Arkham Asylum. Um, yeah, but yeah, there's like. I was going to say is like one of my favorite bits is um, it's at the very end where uh, you're like oh you're invited to <laughs> Mr. J's par- uh, party and you walk in yep. and all the guards are there or the goons and they're clapping like oh yeah yeah hey welcome to the party and you're just like they, they don't attack you at all and you're just slowly walking unless yeah, <laughs> unless you just go you attack them whoop, first just let it fly so there's an achievement slash trophy for beating those guys yeah. up which I don't like I wish they didn't have that because that influences people. I totally when I first played through that game, that was one of the only trophies I didn't have. Yeah, same. I just I was, I was like, like, okay, because I because I, <laughs> I thought it was so cool. I'm just like, I'm they they want me in. There. <laughs> I'm going in. If they're not attacking me, I have no reason to end these yeah. guys. There's no point. I mean, um, I think I think Asylum, like, yeah, it's very it's 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 excellent game, but City kind of from what I remember, anyways, I'm, I'm mainly thinking of the, the Mr. Freeze boss battle. Um, I can't think of any of the other ones, but uh, Raza Ghoul was a really good one. Oh yeah, that was freaking insane because that, that was just like batshit crazy. Um, I can't think of any other ones, but um, yeah, like maybe my favorite boss battle in Arkham Asylum would be uh, the ones where you are surrounded by a bunch of goons and then a huge hulking Titan goon comes in. And then yeah. you, and then like you can manipulate him into like hitting everyone else and like climbing on his back and just taking out everyone. Like that was great because that like it was like a bit of a modifier in the combat situation where it's just like, oh, we're just gonna throw this crazy wild cannon in here, and do what you want with it, you know. Um, Indeed. Uh, that's yeah. Asylum's great. It's a great. I, I really love it. I'm. I might go through City again just because I don't remember it that well. Mm. His, I I played through unlike Asylum, which I played through literally three times. Yeah. I'm on my fourth. I I touched Arkham City once. I really liked it. I, but I just I didn't touch it since. Mm. Same with Origins, but Origins is that's kind of understandable, right. I guess, because it was even though Origins had probably the best story out of all of them. Mm. Um, I think one of my favorite bits in City. Now that I think about it, is um, so it's the whole thing like you're poisoned and you want to get the cure and then all of a sudden you're like you're going around looking to where to go next and then you see a little icon and it's like oh it's it's alfred and he's like oh like oh master bruce oh yeah, i found yeah, a yeah. cure and you're like holy shit i have to go here because i'm dying i'm poisoned and then the game just like completely like pulls the rug out from underneath you and just throws you in it's mad hatter, yeah it's right? the, it the mad hatter boss fight you're wearing this weird bunny hat and you're beating the shit out of people on a flying clock and you're like what is going on uh, yeah, the, I really like the Raza Ghoul sequence. Was there, was there a Scarecrow sequence? I don't think there was in City. Was there? Mm, no, yeah, I think there was like the Raza Ghoul kind of things. Which is yeah, which was basically it's actually like, Rachel Ghoul. Thank you very much. That's a good Jesus, point. You're, kind, you're I mean, you're right. Gosh, but <laughs> but it looks like Raz. Yeah, it does. Shocking, you do. In in. Batman Begins, they say wrong. Yeah, but it's so wrong. <laughs> it is yeah, wrong. It's so Rache wrong. sounds stupid, so... Yeah. Rache. Rache uh, I don't know why I keep remembering this, but the the part in Arkham City where you're pinned up against a wall by one of Rache's ninjas, mm. and you have to get her to open the door for you or whatever, and she swings at you. Instinctively, you know you have to press the counter button to avoid it, and that's what it was. It was such a way to do quick time events that made sense because it was gameplay that you were taught from the very beginning, right? And it, it wasn't like a big glowing X button on the screen. It was do what you've been yeah, doing yeah. in this cinematic moment. It was really cool. <laughs> that just reminded me of um, there was this video floating around a while back. Uh, it was like the intro to Arkham City. It's when you're getting like beat up by penguin, it's like you're also a really cool. Intro. Yeah, you're meant to press triangle. To, That's another to dodge one. It, yes, but it's like if you don't press it, he just keeps wailing on you for like forever, <laughs> just nonstop wailing. I think the video was like two minutes long of you just getting beaten up. 
do you eventually die? No, you just keep going. You just, <laughs> you just keep, keep going. Yeah, but that's a but that's another thing, right? That's not a that's a technically a quick time event, but it's gameplay that you do. Right. It's not. It's not a big blow. Glo- it's game. the The game teaches you how to counter, and then you know how to counter for fights. Right. So when that you you learn that that's how you get out of stuff. So that's just that's just cool. Uh, that, that's that's a great intro. Good design. I actually, yeah, that is also really. I good learned. Game. I think it was on. Uh, I can't remember. It was on Twitter, maybe. But like, I saw someone uh, tweeted saying, "Oh, I never noticed this in the intro before to Arkham City." So he like when you're playing the game. Uh, the, the guy that was playing it like zoom did the zoom in thing with the the R three button, and he looked up, and as he looked up the like Israel uh, the the guy yeah, he's, yeah, he's that, on yeah he's the on the rooftops. rooftop staring down you and I was like what that is I did not even think of that that's great oh that game's so good I think he's in the Arkham Knight I'm pretty sure he like he has to be I guess we'll know in one month oh god if Arkham Knight does like everything city does i'll be happy in terms of like just engineering some amazingly well put together game that works yeah. but doesn't kind of it, it's kind of hard to describe it. It, it, it it's a game for sure but it doesn't feel like a game it feels more like uh, i don't want to say experience because that really cheeses it up but it, it's kind of the batman yeah experience. it's yeah it's, it's what you're like paying batman simulator. yeah you're paying like whatever 60 bucks to be batman and that's what you want you don't want to have this stupid game element of like oh take down all his health or that kind of bullshit i mean you you want the feeling of being batman in terms of you want to go through all the dangers he does and you want all of the the options that batman does available to get out of those dangers and that's why the first i'd say all of the games do it but that's why they're all so highly praised because they they make you feel like batman they design the game around a believable Batman scenario, and you feel like Batman getting out of right. it. And if they do that again, even if it's even if it's just competent, I expect it to be really good. But even if it's just competent, if they pull that off again, that's more than enough for mm. me. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of the city story? That's, that's one question I usually ask people. It was, it was good. All right. Yeah, I, I, it was okay. It wasn't like amazingly brilliant I, I thought like there was so much stuff added into it there's just so much going on that's the bit that kind of threw me a bit well that that's that's the bummer about it is that the, I really like the Hugo Strange overarching right. idea I also like the Joker but the the plot. first one took a back seat considerably for the Joker one I think which is a bit yes, I, I, which I, is stupid I, because Joker was the star of Arkham right. Asylum. I didn't need him again. The Joker has been the star of all three of the Arkham games so far, and that's not okay. Especially when um, was or- Origins uh, was all about Black Mask. Yeah, Origins wasn't even freaking. You didn't even know Joker was yeah. in it. It's like, oh, it's Joker. Okay. And then, oh wait, no, it's Joker. Of course it is. Yeah. Because that's all. I'm spoilers for Arkham City. Anyway, I'm hopeful that there is no Joker in the next one mm. because he's dead. Right. Uh, and I'm fine with Scarecrow being the main bad guy, which is kind of what that and the Arkham Knight seem to be the 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 main bad guys, right? Right. They've been hyping Scarecrow a whole lot, which actually excites me because I really like the idea. Scarecrow has one of the coolest freaking powers of any villain yeah. of all time. So the idea of playing on that, I would love to see. I'd love to see Batman affected by the Scarecrow toxin while fighting someone else. Yeah. You know, well, that'd be kind of cool. Here's the thing: that's what I figured the whole Arkham City was going for because it was Hugo Strange and he's like a genius psychiatrist or whatever. And he, I figured he's going to like mess with you a little bit, which he does t- to some extent. Um, I remember one scene in Arkham City where there's like it's an Easter egg. There's like a you go down the alleyway where. Um, uh, Batman's parents were murdered and he, you find out like he left like a, a bunch of flowers and a note for you and like you literally just walk over and press it literally comes up press X to pay respects and you're just like he, it just takes a moment like the camera pans down to you and he just takes a knee and stares down the camera just going around you and I was like this is genuinely very touching moment in a game I did not expect to have this kind of level of oh shit this is a bit too real but um, yep. 
yeah, that's what I was figuring. There'd be more of that kind of thing in the game, but it wasn't really. So hopefully, Scarecrow kind of throws in a bit of like really pushing Batman's mental capacity to the limit. And I'm hoping that the M rating helps that. Oh yeah, really kind of It'll messes help them it up. Go places that they couldn't oh, go boy. before. So yeah, I'm wondering if they just play because they didn't seemed they didn't seem really perturbed about being rated M. Hmm. When they came out, it's like you know we're telling the story we want to tell. If it's rated M, then it's rated right. M. Some people might not buy it, but they'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this probably just because normally it was. It's usually a battle getting it to rated T because that's they're going to sell more copies that right. way. But if they're just like, we're not even going to try. <laughs> this is rated. This is a story we want to tell. This is just one giant long curse word. It makes word. me wonder. It makes me wonder if that's what they were just going to go for to begin with because mm. they were not at all upset. About the fact that it was maybe, right but like I can't see how um, Arkham Asylum or City could really like change that much from being more uh, graphic or uh, blood. Yeah, blood, but like that's it, really. Not it's not so much like it's, it's yeah, not a, it's not it, a big it, it deal. I don't think. Yeah, but I mean, they can't. There are th- topics that they cannot touch with a T right. rating. I, I, I at least in a video <laughs> game, I. I I don't think T equals PG thirteen for movies, which I don't know what it is for you. And uh, I think it's like twelve. Maybe. Yeah, it's like twelve. So it's like anyone over twelve can play it. Yeah. And then it's fifteen, so, which is which is not the equivalent to T. I don't think. Mm, no. Or I guess Peggy thirteen, Peggy twelve. Right. Um, yeah, I was gonna say it's like I hope the M rating is just like it's it's just because of one like really long curse word. <laughs> it's like Alfred just says like some ridiculous. Alfred just had enough. <laughs> Or just says like, oh, go kick that ass, Mister Bruce. I mean, they could they could tackle. I mean, there's some messed up stuff in Gotham. They could tackle like sexual assault, which is not an easy topic, but that's something they could do. Mm-hmm. I'm interested. I'm know, interested with the multiple character situation. I wonder if he means we get to. I really, really don't want to play as Robin or Nightwing or anyone other than Batman. Mm. I just don't like those characters. Mm. I, really I mean. Yeah, I I understand you when you say like Robin or Nightwing because to me they're basically just like watered down versions of Batman. Like they're like eh, it's the same kind of thing. Oh, pl- yeah, but plus you enter those into the equation and it ruins everything Batman is. You you add Robin to so if you add Dick Grayson to Bruce Wayne and then you see similar sized Bruce Wayne or Batman and Robin out at night fighting and they have all these expensive things and Dick Grayson's face is barely covered. Mm. <laughs> it just, it just ruins I it. guess what I was saying is like, I wonder if like how they're going to deal with like, I, I, I wonder if they'll have like a small section where you can play as the other characters. Maybe, who knows, but I wouldn't mind uh, getting to play as Catwoman again because I thought those sections were really cool. Oh, now Bruce Wayne adopted a younger girl. Wait, what the heck? Now there's another. Now there's Batgirl. Strange. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. The timing is really. Oh weird. man, I forgot about the Batgirl thing. That's. I'm actually kind of interested in that DLC because it could oh, be interesting. The forty dollar DLC. Yeah. I swear to God, if that DLC is the killing joke, I'm gonna I'm gonna be pretty mad. <laughs> if that DLC is the killing joke, I'll pay the freaking forty. I no because no, that is like that's what everyone. Well, okay. You're right. Because Batgirl is not just a killing joke. She's not just that story. Like, there's... Well, no. She's barely that story. She's I know, a, I know, I know. actually the victim of that story, so... Yeah. Whatever. We gotta stop talking about Batman. We, we so have so much minutes. Burtman. We just can't stop it. Lots of Burtman. How come Batman doesn't do the bat to see anymore? There's a Simpsons reference. There you go. That was my favorite one. It's like, uh, yeah, they, they meet Adam West at the convention center. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's just... <laughs> Look, they got the wax. Yeah. Or they look so light. Yeah. Like, well, thank you, young. Yeah. Man. I'm just like slowly backing away. <laughs> oh god. Uh, have you played anything else? Um, on the clip? I actually, I haven't. I really haven't. I mean, I played Bloodborne for like a little bit, but that's not enough to really talk about it. I don't think. I would talk about Maximo, but you don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, no, nah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to drop any Hughes news? Oh, sure. Real quick, just quick. Yeah, I guess I'm... Check out the owl. What, there was a big one that we missed last week, and I don't remember what it was. Oh, there you was were, you were asking the like, wrong oh, guy. Why, why didn't we think about 
I don't um, I don't remember. It was it was I remember finishing the podcast and a couple of days later I was like, Oh yeah, that happened totally while before the the break and then something big happened and we totally did not talk about it and I don't remember what it was. I We talked about Konami. Right. So I do not remember. Penis. Sucks. <laughs> I wish I wrote it down. Uh yeah, I actually I, I yeah, I think I know what you mean. Like it was something Something big, anyway. Something we could talk about for sure, but like, I actually can't remember it all. Sorry, it just slipped my mind. Um, news, not much news really, apart from friggin' Witcher Tree, um, Doom, oh, an E3 no. teaser. That's that's cool, I guess. Oh well, yeah, E3's coming. Holy crap, is E3 coming? Oh boy, I didn't even think about that. That's next month. It's like two weeks from yeah, now. Yeah, two weeks. Next month. Um, oh man. Oh god! Are you gonna get you gonna get some Fallout Four action? Are you excited? Yeah, I'm I'm excited, but I, I, <laughs> it's it's like weary excitement. It's like uh, just just why just announce it, just just come on. I mean, it exists. <laughs> just know that it exists. Yeah, but I need to hear it. I need to hear it right? from the horse's mouth. You, you need to hear. I it need to hear that shit. I need to. You need. I this? need a written confession mailed to me. It's it's working. Okay, it's on the way. Okay. More time. Um, yeah. You want me to call him up for you? I, I'm i trying to think. What, what else is being announced? Well, meant to be announced. <laughs> <laughs> what do you... Randy, uh, tell me exactly everything that will be announced so I can get hyped. <laughs> there will be something related to Call of Duty. Though. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, were we meant to talk about Assassin's Creed? Is that it? Oh, the Brock Lesnar thing? <laughs> <laughs> that's still pretty great. It was undeniably Brock Lesnar. Yeah. What do you, yeah. Th- th- my reaction when that trailer dropped was like, uh, eh. No, I'm pretty sure we talked about that last week. Yeah. Though. Or at least a little bit. I'm I'm just, now that I've missed one and a half Assassin's Creed, more than that, one and three quarters Assassin's Creed's, mm. I cannot say plural Assassin's Creed's for some reason. It sounds, sounds so weird. Assassin's Creed's. It's, it's, it's Creed's is- so, so, Creedies, so many S's. Creds. Sucker and succotash. <laughs> oh, God. Um, um, yeah, I, I just, after missing those and being okay with it, I, I don't think I need it anymore. Mm. I might be there. You've reached the... There's nothing to, there's nothing to draw <laughs> back. Uh, I, I'm really grasping a straw thinking of stuff here. Um, apparently there's a new, there might be a new Need for Speed Underground Tree. Eh. There you go. Shout out to all you players out there that like to race Nissan Skylines. I'm not a big racing game guy. No, not me neither. But Underground 2 was pretty fun. Just because of all the ridiculous ways you could modify your car. Um, yeah. And they looked really nice too for the time. I mean, yeah. They, like, it was... A good sense of speed. Yeah. I felt the need for it. <laughs> <sighs> well... <laughs> I might have to wrap oh, up. House of Wolves. Was that it? It's out? No, it's not it. Uh, it's uh, I'm on the quest to figure out what, what, what this was. Yeah, apparently um, people saying... It was something big. It was something where I'm like, no, we should have definitely talked about that. that was oh, this is going to drive right? me insane. Okay, I'm looking at all like the top news. It was like a four, maybe five week break that we took, so it could be any. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of shit to go through. Um, was it to do with Star Wars? Maybe? No. I don't think so. Mm. Is there a game announcement? No, just more <laughs> more news about what's not in the game. <laughs> oh, God. That's the thing. I, I see more more news stories about that game saying what's not in it <laughs> than what is actually in it to be excited about, which is, yeah. which is crazy. I don't know. I just... I don't think I need that game either. Yeah, I was. Ex- it was weird because I was super excited for it. I, th- I I remember going, "Oh, this that could be cool. That could be really fun." But we're talking about Battlefront. Uh, Battlefront, yeah. Sorry, uh, and yeah, eventually it was just like, no, I'm not. Ex- I'm not as pumped anymore. I'm just. I'm getting a bit. Mm, I don't know. This might not be the game. I was thinking it was going to be. Uh, I'm trying to think. Was it to do it? Rock Band Four. Did we talk about Silent Hills? Yeah, like we did. Sad face. Very sad face. 
Oh yeah, I put, I put out a tweet there. I was just, like, I was talking to one of my friends there. Um, he was saying to me like, "Oh, oh, dude, I hope for E3 that we get a new uh, Red Dead." And I was just like, "Why?" <laughs> It's like because that game was the best game ever, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah. that game was the best game ever. Why do you want another one?" <laughs> yeah, I don't. There are games that don't need sequels. Hey, That's one. There of you them. go. I I haven't finished Red Dead. I actually want to. Ah, uh, I've I've seen the ending, so I don't think I need to. No, you no, you should you should keep going. It's 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 good. Keep going. It's been forever. <laughs> no, you gotta do it. You gotta I do play it. it. <laughs> the the problem is that. While I was playing it, my Xbox died, oh, right. and then I got a new Xbox, and no longer. Came out. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I didn't, and, and that was around the time where I was switching all the way over to PC. Mm. You know, I was switching all my game. Like, screw this Xbox nonsense. Just, I'm waiting for that Red Dead PC port. Oh maybe. God, it's you coming. Poor bastard. Still <laughs> it's a skeleton. Still waiting. <laughs> um, yeah, that game is straight up Rockstar in terms of it is the slowest start of a game. The slowest of burns. It is just so slow, and it can really put people off playing it because, like, I, I like the, I really like the opening to that game. Actually, I, no, I do too because, like, I that's one thing I have to give credit to. Like, um, I, I'm thinking of like GTA Four, Five, uh, Red Dead. They're like super slow. Like just like half the game is teaching you how to play the game, but like I kind of enjoyed that. That there's still a sense of oh, I'm still learning. There's still more to the game, which is like it's kind of like discovering something new. Like oh yeah, cool. I, now I know how to drive boats. Now I know how to fly planes. And like what five hours ago, I was just figuring out how to turn on the headlights. So <laughs> it's a cool sense of progression, I guess. Okay, I think I remember what it oh, is. He's got it. The Skyrim. Sp- Skyrim paid mods. <gasps> oh my god! Yeah, it was a big whoa, freaking whoa, deal. Whoa. That was a big one. Uh, what a mess! Yeah, Jesus, that was like. <laughs> what was the what was the end result with that? Did it just it was just can't? Kind of, they took it down. Yeah. They canceled Good. it. Well, I mean, it was gross because people that had free mods up, it, it was a bad idea to do this on Skyrim because Skyrim is one of the most modded games. Right out and the had a has a really big community right. and then they added this thing and then people were down yeah mods they just they just that, went onto the workshop that they didn't own and just uploaded this is my mod and, yeah. oh, and say so, yeah this is my mod and straight up stealing people would paid mods or with free mods were make them paid and then the free versions had advertisements for the paid version <laughs> it was a mess yeah. and people were not ready to start paying for stuff that they originally got for free right really so because that I mean, how long has Skyrim been out? Four or five? Four years. Five years? Four years. I think it's five years. I think it's four years. Yeah, four years. Something yeah, like 11, 11, 11, 11. It's been a long freaking time. And now suddenly you're just going to make us start paying for this thing that we've had for free for four years? That's messed up. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. I agree with them. On the other hand, making mods takes time, and time and effort right. is worth money. So I kind of think that Mod makers should be paid, but I don't think that was the way to go about yeah. it. That was just. But I, I, I was a mess. I guess, like I, just speaking from what I imagine, this is probably the very worst thing I should do because I have no real <laughs> opinion or genuine like research done on this. But I imagine people who make mods just do it for fun and just kind of go, "Oh, I made this stupid thing, everyone enjoy." And then, it, like, because I remember one particular one for Skyrim was like. Um, he someone replaced all the dragons with uh, Thomas the Tank Engine trains, which is hilarious. Uh, so when you hear the well, that's another thing. The dragon roar like, on here is like two two. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's, that's a, funny, but like you can't. Should you pay for that? I don't know. I mean, you can't because when, as soon as you charge money for it, you can't put up copyrighted material. Right. So if Thomas the Tank Engine, if that toot was copyrighted, <laughs> you can't pay for yeah. it. The Macho Man Randy oh Savage. Oh my thing. god, that is my that. favorite thing. And that's and that's my favorite thing ever. <laughs> and you can't you can't pay for that. So I don't even think that's up on Steam because that's a registered. Yeah. It just so yeah. I mean there were there were interviews out there with mod makers that were like, yeah, I kind of wish that we got paid because they have a donation thing. I guess the idea is that you pay what you the goodwill. Think, yeah. yeah, just yeah, people will donate when they're appreciative, but no one ever donates. Right, because because duh, yeah, of course. 
no one wants to give away their money on this. They're... I I have no issue with people making content for games that then they can charge money for. Right. But the, for a thing that was a, that started out as free and was free for four years, that's not no, mm. not that one. Start with something else. I mean, Team Fortress Two. There are in Dota Two. People are making stuff for that and charging money for it, and they're making money, and that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. And more games will come out, and they'll do that. Cliffy B's new game is going to be doing that. I'm at, or no, wait, it's Unreal that's going to be doing that. So. It's happening, and that's fine. Mm. People pay for DLC anyway. You might as well have users be able to make cool stuff and charge for it. Right. This this is kind of like, in a way, this is kind of like the Bandcamp version of mods, where it's like you see a mod you like and you pay for it, as and you think, oh, this they're doing something interesting here. Uh, I like it. I want to give like five dollars, whatever, and then you get your mod, as opposed to oh, I'm gonna go out and buy a CD <laughs> that's like twenty dollars, whatever. I think. Yeah, I think the idea that you should reward people who are trying something and putting a lot of effort into it and giving them a bit of cash or whatever is cool. But yeah, like you said, it was free for like a long time, and then they just said, "Oh, we're just going to start charging." Just, for it. I will really pit. Just Skyrim was not the game to start yeah. with. Just started with something. What else. really pissed me off was the, the, like the leechers. I guess the people who just downloaded the mods and uploaded them and said, "This is my mod," even though it wasn't, and then. They were asking for money. So that, like, if there's one thing I hate in the world, it's like people that just like copyright and steal things and do not credit it, like in anything. Yeah. You know, like it's just it's there pissing some me off. Bad people out there. It's just to be like, oh, this is mine. Give me money. And it's like it's not yours. You like ripped it off something. You know, you didn't put anything to it. You didn't do a f- like add your own flair to it. You just you just copy and pasted. Where's my money? That's crazy. Like, uh, just takes me off. Yeah, I, uh, but there are some really robust Skyrim mods out there that are basically campaigns. Yeah, for sure. They have that, like, the, you know, the it, what was the one, the Morrowind one? The I don't even Yeah, well, yeah, there's that, but then there's just these custom ones that people add custom voice acting to. Yeah, right, and, sure. All new quests, yeah. and it's just ridiculous just, stuff They're just out there. massive fans. They just want to keep the game alive and add something to it. And I was really cool. I am more than willing to pay them for that stuff. You know, if if that if it's if, good, yeah. If sure. I wanted it, yeah. If someone went out there made this really cool custom campaign for freaking Batman or something, right. And wanted to charge money for it, I'd I'd give yeah, money no, to reward yeah. that stuff and then get cool content on at, at the same time. It, it it's it's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. So just yeah. I mean, that they had they they were all volunteers. There was a freaking dozen people working on it. There was voice actors and stuff. That I actually saw a casting call for this. Thing. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. I I, I know there was uh, Marwind is the Marwind one was a similar situation. It's just it's a ridiculous amount of stuff, and they don't get they don't get anything for it, and they should because mm. it's a lot of time that they're taking that they could be doing something else that does earn them money. Mm. You know, and they and. If the, it, the the only difference of what they're doing is that if they did it in a stu- studio, they'd be getting paid. Only they're doing it at home. Right. It, it's so. Yeah, just maybe Skyrim was not the game to start this. Mm. On. I, I guess maybe Fallout. Yeah, maybe. I mean, that already has like a similar situation where they had a mod that like Fallout Four doesn't. Yeah, they had, they had a mod in Fallout Three and New Vegas where it basically bridged the game together, so you could play both games. And just take it like a train, or whatever, and you can go back and forth, which I think is pretty cool. That's kind of cool. Um, it makes no sense in terms of the story, but it, yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. why not? Who cares? It's a mod. <laughs> but I guess Vegas and what is it, Washington D.C.? Yeah, right. And did d- d- a train? <laughs> <laughs> That's a long why train not? ride. <laughs> you can take a helicopter. Then. I don't care. <laughs> but I, the helicopter would not make it. Uh, you were being I, I think you were being facetious yeah, here, I've got lots of fuel on board come on I'm part of it That's a, <laughs> you can't carry fuel around. yeah just get one guy to, <laughs> he's hanging out the side he's pouring it in oh shit <laughs> but I, I guess what I was thinking is that with mods I think that kind of that can kind of open up a lot of things then where it says well if people are making uh, content for the game surely people who do stuff like uh, fan art and stuff that other people like maybe not to the extent of mods because you can't you play mod for sure but you can't play like uh, cosplay or whatever but I kind of feel like 
maybe those kind of people should get a piece of the pie as well because like they're doing these really ornate like I'm just thinking cosplays people who do like uh, poster designs uh, art, lo loads of artists and stuff um, like I feel like those people should be getting some kind of money as well you know because yeah but on the, at the same time not oh finish your thought uh, no I was going to say that like it's it, again it's not like mods in terms of um, uh, in terms of like oh they're uh, like with a mod you're adding something to the game that people can experience and play but I wouldn't necessarily say that just because someone like someone who makes like an art piece or something that's really well done that doesn't really that, I'm not saying that doesn't add to the game either you know what I mean it's but I guess I kind of see it as they're both kind of fan made things so maybe I don't know maybe I would love to see something where it's like if a lot of people are interested in just say someone does a really kick ass uh, art piece for uh, I don't know Shovel Knight or something right and then the Yacht Games is like oh that's really cool uh, we want to like help you sell it I think that would be really cool you know something like I wish more companies would do stuff like that but who knows I guess I'm just saying that yeah. I'm just saying that as a that's, kind of yes community kind of thing like I'd love to see that kind of thing because I, I love uh, when a game gets a huge community that it's just like there's so much going around about it. Like there's people making fiction about it, uh, painting about it, even like like you said, mods and stuff. Like I just I love that kind of stuff where it's like it just the game just keeps going well past its expiration date because everyone loves it so much. And I, Which is a rare thing. Not not a lot of games get no. that. So. But I'd, I'd love for more developers to kind of definitely encourage it. It's like, yeah, keep going, keep making stuff. Uh, that's kind of that's what I assumed the mods was. It was kind of an incentive to keep the game going. But maybe Skyrim, like you said, was a bad one because Skyrim is already so huge. I'd say, yeah, maybe Fallout. What probably would be the best one because everyone's crazy about Fallout right now. It's hopefully, because four will be announced in two weeks' time. I guess we'll find out. Oh god, I am uh, E three. I I hate saying I hate every year. I try not to get excited for it, but gee whiz, I get excited every single time. But ah, uh, you can't give into the hype. You just get too too. But it's still too fun. crazy. And then the it's then the fun. games aren't as good as you hoped they would be, and then you get sad. What do you mean? What are we talking about? Watch oh, yeah. The game is great. I play it every day. Uh -huh. so Ubisoft guy beside me just. I literally played one extended session of that game and never touched it. <laughs> was that game like meant to be um, a driver kind of clone? Isn't the and the drive? Watch Yeah, it's like it, it, oh, I have no. It idea. was something like the guys who made Driver, uh, Driver San Francisco, I think, worked on Watch Dogs. But the driving in that game is really bad, which makes no sense. Just about everything in that game was. That's eh, a bit harsh. I just didn't care for that game. I think the best part is that. Um, you can vault over um, someone's grave in it, <laughs> and like it's a it's a like a character's grave that when related to your character, you can vault over their grave because why not? <laughs> it's like yeah. I'm so sad, paying my respects. Well, press X to vault. Zoop. <laughs> <laughs> Zoop. That's a great word, and that's going to be the word that if you've listened this far All right, yeah. <laughs> put in the comments Z O O P Zoop exclamation point pending it's up to you yeah that's up to you it's optional <laughs> but secretly you should probably put yeah, it yeah depends how excited you are uh, zoop <laughs> all right i think i'm on borrowed time with my internet it's been farting around so Adam, you're not adam nathan hey. i'm mixing the irish that's up your look <laughs> <laughs> nathan thank you you're welcome for joining me at this yeah hour. what is it it's gotta be eight o'clock. Yeah, okay. I'm so tired. I'm on fucking like so overtired. I'm getting hyper again. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go play some games right. and pass out. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna load up the Witcher. Woo! I'm gonna wait patiently by the door for my copy. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna rub it in your face every time something cool happens. Oh yeah, I'm gonna spoil it. Ah oh, god, oh boy. All right, all right. Thanks again. Yeah, you're welcome. We'll be back next week. Bye. Oh, Lorraine, I love you so much. Soup. <laughs>